Солнце. Солнце. Чек. Окей. Hello, солнце. Майк, 1, 2, 3, солнце. Окей. Окей. Check sound, sound, one, 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 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Check, check, sound, sound. Hey, 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 check, check, one.
check, check, sound, sound. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Check, check, sound, sound. One, one. Hey, 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 check, check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Audio check, check, sound, sound.
morning everyone. <coughs> Ngayon ang maga po sa lahat. Morning. Um, thank you very much for joining us to this hearing. Uh, this meeting is now called to order. I'd like to um, direct the committee secretary to acknowledge our resource persons for this morning. Good morning. I would like to acknowledge our guests and resource persons for today's public hearing from the Department of Energy, Yusek Donato Marcos and Dire Director Rino Abad, from the Energy Regulatory Commission, Attorney RJ Louis Cunanan and Engineer Nestor Padilla, from the Power Sector Assets and Liabilities Management Corporation, Mr. Ronald Contilia, from the Philippine Electricity Market Corporation, Attorney Marian De La Fuente and Ms. Elaine Gonzalez. From the uh, Independent Electricity Market Operator of the Philippines, uh, Ms. Engineer Isidro Cacho Jr. and Mr. Jonathan De La Vinia. From the National Power Corporation, Ms. Enelita De Los Reyes, Mr. Randy Villarin and Mr. Rafael Abergas. From the Philippine National Oil Company Exploration Corporation, Attorney Datu Omar Sinswat and Mr. Candido Magsumbol, Mr. Jaime Bakud, and from the Department of Finance, Director Elsa Agustin, from the Department of Science and Technology, Mr. Aguerico Bautista, from the Bureau of Internal Revenue, Attorney Raymond Ipio, from the Department of Transportation, Director Rafael Lavides, from the Philippine Statistics Authority, Mr. Francisco Manalili Jr. and Mr. Edgar Valerio Jr., from the Manila Electric Company, Mr. Roderick Denison Naku, from the Philippine Rural Electric Cooperatives Association, Ms. Nadine Samantha Valderrama, From Shell Philippines Exploration, Mr. Anthony Ferrer and Mr. Ed Gutionko, Petroleum Association of the Philippines. From Petroleum Institute of the Philippines, Mr. Teddy Reyes. From the Management Association of the Philippines, Mr. Ernesto Pantanco. From the Developers of Renewable Energy for Advancement Incorporated, DREAM, Attorney Jay Layog. From Laban Consumer Incorporated, Engineer Rogelio Avenido. Everyone has been acknowledged, sir. Thank you, uh, thank you, Comsec. Uh, once again, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, kahit na Halloween po, eh, nandito ho kayo. Um, kung may time mo kayo mamaya, may trick or treat rin kami mamaya dyan sa labas. Pero dapat si Yusek Marcos, eh, magsuot ng uh, costume. Um, actually, um, we call for a hearing uh, and we will be discussing uh, PS Resolution 916 and the um, objective of this hearing is to uh, learn and uh, appreciate the energy security as well as energy sufficiency uh, strategy of the Department of Energy. And this year, 2018, has been a very tumultuous year for us uh, in terms of inflation. and. Um, this year alone, uh, on the average, if you look at the three um, different pricing for crude oil, on the average prices from January to October has risen by 25%. So, uh, nakita ho natin by start of the year, um, ang Dubai crude is about $64 per barrel. Ngayon po ay pumapalo na siya ng uh, $82 per barrel. Pero bumaba naman siya, but Nevertheless, from January to, um, uh, to date, um, all of these pricing indicators on the average uh, rose by about 25%. And at the same time, uh, because we import almost 96% uh, of our oil, uh, yung local refined fuel tumaas rin. Uh, on the average, gasoline went up by 25%. Diesel, on, on the average, went up, went up by 34%. There, on table um, uh, table six. So because of all of this um, increase in prices, 
uh, inflation peaked at around 6.7% this coming September. So um, everyone's blaming um, oil. No? Everyone's blaming imported um, uh, energy uh, that has uh, somehow direct and indirect effects to uh, the pricing or prices of basic commodities. Um, to date, uh, based on the PEP, we import almost 60% of our coal and we import almost 96% of our oil. But sa mga power plants, I understand, they import almost 90% of their coal uh, to fuel their uh, coal-fired power plants because yung local coal natin hindi pwede doon sa mga planta nila. So in effect, uh, we use actually more coal in our uh, local coal-fired power plants. Um, with that, uh, this um, hearing wants to uh, drill down on the government strategy on energy security and energy self-sufficiency and how these concepts, these two concepts, affect uh, inflation and affect the basic prices of commodities, the pricing of basic commodities. Um, in, in my view, um, energy security should be a paramount concern of our nation. In fact, in the DOE's um, nine-point strategic direction, uh, number one siya doon po sa, sorry, sa eight-point strategic direction, number one siya no, doon sa uh, agenda to ensure energy security. And I think the reason for that really is to um, insulate the consumers from price volatility and uh, by having energy security, it also has an effect in our economic well-being by importing less. So um, uh, with that in mind, um, again, the, the, the uh, goal here is to understand um, where we are in terms of energy security and self-sufficiency and what can we do in the next uh, few years. Uh, looking at the Philippine energy uh, demand outlook of uh, the DOE, um, marami pong mga indicators ho dito, but we want to tie up the energy security to the outlook of supply and demand in the next few years. Actually, itong outlook po is until 2040. So, um, uh, hopefully po, at the end of the hearing, we can uh, uh, recommend uh, the stakeholders. No, the, We have a lot of stakeholders here. The stakeholders can recommend uh, some fine-tuning in the uh, uh, energy security agenda of the DOE. And kung meron po tayong mga loose ends or problema, we can also untangle that in this hearing. But the goal here really is to appreciate the energy security agenda of the DOE uh, in line with its uh, eight-point agenda, uh, quantify that, and uh, embed that in the uh, uh, Philippine Energy Plan uh, to 2040. Um, with that, uh, we will turn over the floor to the DOE uh, to enlighten us as to where we are no, in terms of energy security and energy sufficiency. Good morning, uh, distinguished chairman uh, on uh, Senate Committee on Energy, Senator uh, Wing uh, Gatsalian, uh, the OE family, uh, s energy stakeholders, uh, industry players, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning po. Sir, uh, tama po kayo, magpa-participate ako mamaya sa, sa ninyo. Kaya lang, sir, pang-Christmas pang yung costume ko, Santa Claus eh. Hindi ako kamukha ni Freddy Krueger. Eh. Anyway, sir, uh, uh, as much as the Secretary would like to attend this uh, very, very momentous meeting, uh, he's now attending po uh, the AMEM meeting in Singapore, so he would like to apologize for uh, for not attending this. And uh, he knows that this is a very opportune time for us to to really support such initiative of the Senate through, through your uh, representation, Chairman. And, uh, of course, uh, we are here to uh, to do anything that we can contribute uh, to really come up realizing the 100% uh, energy security and sustainability of the country. Although it's a long shot, pero po DOE uh, is uh, continuously studying all the mitigation factors, all the all 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 the 
all the laws that has uh, uh, or the initiative of the Senate that has been supported by DOE, and of course we do some uh, some uh, department circulars that uh, uh, in the long run will need also uh, legislative uh, uh, or legislation through, through the Senate and the Congress. Uh, First, uh, as a briefer on the strategic petroleum reserve, this is about oil. Uh, as you've mentioned, uh, Honorable Chair, the Philippines is heavily dependent on external sources for its uh, petroleum supplies, expo uh, exposing the country to worldwide price and supply uh, fluctuations, necessitating the, necessitating the need uh, for an interrupted access to petroleum supplies at reasonable prices and at any given time. The country imports more than 90% of petroleum supply, primarily sourced from different countries like the Middle East, Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, Taiwan, Korea, among others. Currently, the country has two refineries, Shell and Batangas, uh, Shell Batangas and Petran Bataan, with a total refining capacity of 285,000 barrels per stream day, vis-a-vis -vis total country demand of 456,000 ba uh, barrels per calendar day for the year 2017. The Philippines, though a net importer of crude and finished products, does not maintain government-owned or controlled stocks, and the country is relying only on local production and imports on commercially held inventories by oil industry participants to meet its oil requirements. The DOE, in, in anticipation, or, and the DOE secretary, secretary, in anticipation of the country's oil supply, situation and protection of the public interest, being the ex officio Chairman of PNOC EC Board, together with its board members, passed a resolution mandating PNOC EC to take the lead in implementation and establishment of strategic petroleum reserve. Uh, though the circular number 2003-01001, the oil companies were required to maintain a minimum inventory requirement of in-country stocks equivalent to 30% a day and of crude and products for refiners, 15 days of product for importers, bulk suppliers, and seven days for L LPG stocks for LPG players. In times of uncertainty, the international oil supplies in the country resulting from conflict in, uh, in country sources, the DOE has oil contingency plan as a countermeasure to cushion the impact of possible oil cut and increase in oil prices. Under the OCP, the DOE oversees the operation of, al and alloca of allocation and distribution system of petroleum products. There are a lot of initiatives that have been done a long time ago, but uh, uh, these are the RT Thailand MOU, Cooperation on Oil and Gas Activities, the U.S. Department of Energy Assistance in assessing the options and potential for Philippine strategic, strategic oil stockpile, Japan's Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry, in assistance in uh, response to energy security initiatives in the Asian region, the proposed Gingona Bill on the creation of Philippine Strategic Petroleum Reserve for the purpose of securing the country's supply of petroleum products. The proposed bill is mandating PNOC to establish a strategic petroleum reserve for the sole purpose of securing the country's supply of petroleum products. And up this date, PNOC through PNOC Board Resolution has been authorized to take the lead in implementation and establishment of strategic petroleum reserve in the country. Uh, this is about the oil, sir. And with regards to upstream development, we have so many circulars and and uh, also EO to really support the sustainability and security of the of uh, our energy. Uh, we have this uh, Philippine Conventional Energy Contracting Round, which uh, later on we will uh, explain. We have the EO 30 signed by the president with the uh, Energy uh, Investing Coordinating Council. Uh, as the lead ag energy is the lead agency coming up with an energy project with national significance and cutting the process into just one month uh, if the papers are com if the requirements are completed we have the philippine downstream natural gas uh, regulation uh, with regards to downstream natural gas uh, industry and uh, the president has uh, just signed also the ease of doing business in the philippines and uh, of course, uh, DOE to OIMB is also studying the unbundling of oil prices. And uh, of course, the importation uh, in the downstream, the importation of diesel of PNOC EC. Of course, the initiative in, uh, uh, for the suspension of 
the first runs, actually the first runs of the train law, and of course supporting the suspension of the second runs of the train law. And uh, of course we are, uh, we are in, in, in consistent uh, agreement and uh, coming up with um, MOUs with the oil industry players with uh, regards to discounts and uh, discounts and other, uh, other corporate social responsibility that will help us cushion the impact of uh, this current crisis. Uh, later on, we'll, uh, we'll discuss other uh, matters that uh, will come up in the, in the discussion, Your, your, uh, your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Yusek. Uh, I have uh, some basic question lang po. No? Ha paano po dinidefine ng uh, DOE ang uh, energy security? Ano ang definition po ng uh, DOE? So that everyone will be on the same the same plane. Uh, energy security, sir. Uh, first and foremost, uh, our country should have uh, self-sufficiency when it comes to energy. Uh, and when it comes to, to supply, uh, whether it's locally produced or imported, there should be, uh, there should have enough supply so that uh, we can satisfy the demand, the current demand. And of course, all the mitigation factors that are uh, globally uh, uh, dictated or uh, by, by the industry uh, should have uh, the, the DOE should have uh, should have cushion all of these impacts. Mm -hmm. So it really pertains to self sufficiency and sustainability. So how do you define self energy energy self sufficiency? Uh, you said like at the moment, uh, 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 in our data of 2016, we have a self sufficiency when it comes to energy of 55.3 percent, and. Uh, imported at 44.2 percent. This uh, pertains to oil with 33.5, coal with 10.8, and uh, biofuel with 0.3 uh, percent. So now how, do you how do you define your self-sufficiency? Uh, what's the definition of self-sufficiency? Self-sufficiency. Self energy self-sufficiency. Uh, energy self-sufficiency is the energy produced uh, in our country, okay. uh, of course, uh, through our indigenous uh, resource. And of course, uh, uh, sufficiency that will be uh, supported by uh, all the departments, circulars, and legislation of the same. So, meaning, ngayon po, you said earlier, we're, self we're energy self sufficient by 55.3%. So, lahat po ng ating uh, primary energy uh, supply, 55% galing po sa local. As per record, sir, yes. Uh, and 45 percent imported. Yes, sir. 44.2 okay. percent. Uh, with that in mind, uh, how do you now, again, de define energy security? Um, are we energy? We're 55 percent self-sufficient, but with this ratio, are we energy secure? Yes, sir. The objective is to really raise the uh, self-sufficiency. From 55 to to a higher uh, margin, sir. Okay. So that's that's really the objective, and and it I, I, it is being supported by uh, programs of DOE like uh, drill, 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 wherein uh, just recently we have discovered the Alegria field, and uh, the other one uh, last uh, two weeks ago, last Wednesday, two Wednesdays ago, we have signed uh, a service contract, uh, a petroleum service contract agreement with Ratio, an Israeli company. Uh, signed by the president and witnessed by the secretary to raise your Israeli petroleum investment. So, so what DOE is saying, in order to achieve uh, a hi higher level of security, um, I would assume may some level of security tayo ngayon, uh, we will need to raise higher level of sufficiency. Yes, sir. Is, uh, that, is that the simple, uh, I'm just breaking it down very simply, no? So we need to increase our ratio in self-sufficiency in order to reach a higher level of security. Yes, sir. And at, uh, at the same time, sir, uh, we need to be proactive with, uh, uh, with regards to, say, for instance, like Malampaya, who will be depleted. We need to be an anticipative regarding that and come up with the, uh, a program like the Philippine Downstream Natural Regulation, which will uh, include the project of uh, integrated uh, LNG terminal. It's correct to say that these two components uh, should go hi hand in hand. 
to pay yes, safety sir. first yes, and then security. Yes, sir. I mean, I, I, I'm just putting it very simply. No, maraming components yan. Apo. There's risk, there's supply, trans transportation. But I want to make it very simple lang so that we will achieve something today. So we achieve, achieve first sufficiency, higher level, meaning more than 55 percent. Yes, sir. And then at the same time, we will achieve security. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, what the current situation is, uh, is, uh, is requiring, sir. Uh, you said itong self-sufficiency natin, no? Energy self-sufficiency. What is the target uh, from now to uh, 2040? Because uh, I read the PEP twice over the weekend. And uh, nakasulat ho kasi dito na 50 to date, no? 55% yung ating self-sufficiency. But nowhere in the PEP projected that by 2040. No. So ano po ang itsura ng sufficiency natin in 2040? Actually sir, uh, nga, sir ang, ang component nito is uh, although long term ng konti yung, uh, yung ating uh, TCECP, pero meron naman tayong mga program like the renewable portfolio standards yes, para sir, sa correct. renewable energy natin. Kasama rin po doon yung uh, siyempre po uh, to be sufficient, kinakailangan uh, yung mga yung mga nakakarb out o yung mga unserved or underserved area, kailang magkaroon din po sila ng sariling grid or uh, yun po ang isa sa ina-address ngayon nung kasi self-sufficiency is not only the current uh, situation of supply dapat po mas tumaas pa ito addressing, uh, addressing yung mga underserved at saka yung mga unserved community. So, may mga smart grid din po tayong iniisip para dito. And uh, uh, tinitingnan po natin uh, how, could we, how could we strengthen and stabilize the fiscal incentives of the energy sector. Uh, Siyempre, kasama na rin po rito yung sinabi ko nga po, yung being anticipative on what will be the foreseen problem in the near future. So, yun po yun. Combination po talaga yan ng uh, ng indigenous plus yung importation kasama po. But, but uh, again, uh, Yusek, itong uh, indigenous sources, to date kasi in 2017, uh, uh, 55%. But what's the projection for um, 2040? So, sir, mukhang as per record, hindi siya ganun kataas na tataas agad. Kasi we have to, we have to address yung increasing demand which will be tripled in, in uh, 2040. So, yun po, sir, yung ina-address to, to, really uh, to really cope up with the demand plus yung additional pang pwedeng... Uh, pwedeng right, but uh, if, we're, if we're talking about, I'm, I'm just laying out, again, no, making it simple. To achieve security, you need to achieve sufficiency. But by 2040, are we going to increase our share in sufficiency? Because kung hindi natin increase in share in sufficiency, hindi natin may increase in security natin. Definitely so the, but I was looking at the PAP, no, wala siya doon eh kung ano yung sufficiency niya by 2040. Kuminto siya on 2017 eh. So we're now at a loss kung magiging sufficient ba tayo at at least at some level by 2040. Yes, sir. Uh, hindi namin ma-determine in terms of the, dito, sir, sa, in terms lalo doon sa ating uh, upstream petroleum uh, or upstream development. Kasi, sir, it will take time to come up with the discovery because just the exploration itself will take us around uh, 7 to 10 years po. So... I, ito yung sinasabi ko, no? This is to date. To date, sir. Yung kanan, yes, sir. Apo. But yung 55%, Ano ba yun? Lalaki yan? Liliit? Uh, ano bang... How hey, do sir, we... Uh, really, to come up with self-sufficiency, dapat po sir lumaki talaga siya. Correct. Dapat so, po, ano ang projection ng DOE? Okay, sir, dito sir, sa, nasa record, uh, ang nangyari, si, yung uh, anticipated growth, yung growth na padating, which is uh, to be tripled by 2040, yun po yung na-address mismo. So... Hindi po naging uh, particular dito, sir, sa, sa 
sa record yung 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 uh, di yung difference ng indigenous from to date up to 2047 so maybe we'll come up with the you know well, that's what set. we're uh, i'm trying to appreciate no because um kung hindi natin ma-project to baka lumiit pa ho to eh, no that's that's my uh that's my uh worry because since we didn't project it uh, hindi natin malalaman kung lalaki ang sufficiency natin. And, uh, nowhere in the PEP also, um, justifies what type of ratio in the next, until 2040. Kasi, um, it will affect our security. No? But if you look at the, uh, ito, I, I just ran a simple, ano lang, no? uh, based on your, PEP, ang business as usual scenario to date, ang RE is 36%. And sila J can attest this later on. But by 2040, ang RE is only 17%. Bumagsak siya. No? And ang reason for that, I saw in your PEP also, RE is not growing so much. No? Like for example, ang hydro, ang growth niya is only 1.9%. Ang wind and solar combined is 0.2 percent. Ang uh, geothermal is 0.4 percent. So, dahil nga sa no mabagal na growth ng RE, babagsak ang RE take or RE share from 36 to 17 percent. So, going by that logic, yung indigenous natin might go down might go down. So if that goes down, going by the simple logic of sufficiency equals uh, security, then we will not achieve security by 2040. Yun po ang yes, aking sir. computation. Yes, no? sir. Kasi considering, sir, na naging triple yung demand, although lumaki yung resource natin sa indigenous, because tripl naging triple nga, sir, yung demand, Kaya yun lang yung, 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 yung nasagot. Lumaki divisor niya, kumbaga sa, kumbaga sir, sa arithmetic uh, equations, sa mathematic equations. Kaya sir, uh, bumaba siya. Pero sir, ang, ang main objective is to really come up with the anticipation with the, uh, kung ano yung growth demand by the year. Yun po yung tinarget eh. Correct, sir. You're right, sir. You're right, sir. Bumaba, I'm sir. I'm just, uh, uh, again, no, the syllogy of the RE can validate this, but Ito, isahin ko, no? geothermal, 0.4% ang growth over the time period till 2040. Hydro, 1.9% over the uh, projected period to 2040. Uh, biomass, medyo mataas, no? 11%. But yung wind and solar is only 0.2%. No? So, that's why yung share ng RE, bababa. And again, no, doing the simple math, bababa rin in ating indigenous. So, um, I, I'm, I'm parang merong, merong inconsistency between your eight-point agenda, which is number one, ho dito, energy security. But going by the PEP, um, it's not going to reach that number one uh, point on the agenda. So, how do we reconcile that? Yes, sir. Uh, we'll try to reconcile. Pero, sir, isa rin kasi, sir, sa tinitingnan dyan, yung upstream development. It will, basta po nagkaroon ng findings, uh, discovery, it will uh, contribute uh, a big percentage on the self-sufficiency issue. Kasi, sir, that's oil and gas. So, uh, coming from uh, from our program na drill, 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 sir, although hindi talaga ganoon kakonkreto kagad na you can uh, uh, you can uh, come up with, an with a specific uh, Numbers, pero sir, with the program, basta sir na utilize na na develop yung uh, unexplored resources natin, it will really contribute uh, big on the self sufficiency factor. Another question, uh, uh, Yusek, yung energy security, no? Uh, again, it's number one on your agenda. How do you measure it? What's the measure of energy security? How do we say to date? Sir, basta uh, ano? Uh, Energy and simple, uh, Mr. Sir, in supply and demand are uh, satisfying each other. I think, sir, walang crisis, walang, uh, 
walang uh, walang inefficiency or walang walang disruption. Basta sir yung yung demand and supply is uh, is okay. Andiyan ba yung stable ba? Yan. I just want to point out, no. Ito yung business as usual and clean energy scenario. Um, if you look at renewable, it's ito yung growth, no, till 2040. Uh, it's only growing at 1.5% um, ang total uh, ang total uh, renewable growth. If you look at coal, which is we're saying it's imported, it's 6.4. Natural gas, which will be imported by 2040, it's 6.7. And oil, which is 97% imported, is 4.5. Yung sa atin, uh, which is indigenous, is only 1.5. So, uh, with this growth figures na nasa PEP, no, kinuha ko ito sa PEP, uh, I don't think we will reach any security by 2040 or any sufficiency for 2040 or both. No? So, how do we reconcile ho ito? Sir, can Director Rino answer po? Mr. Chair, um, uh, let's talk about power, for example. Uh, the P Ito, primary energy muna. Primary no? energy. Oh, para mas uh, we go to the basic first in primary energy. Okay, sir. Uh, but we have to connect of the specific question on renewal, renewable because of the nature of that of that fuel, uh, which is most in most cases nagiging power po. So uh, the 43,000 megawatt uh, projected by 2040 under PEP, uh, naging, nagkaroon ng consultation, in other words, yung, yung bawat uh, fuel. At uh, in that PEP, uh, there is a projected increase of around 15,000 megawatt per RE. Um, I think the reason primarily because of the identification first of the resource itself. So, uh, sa REMB po namin, sa Renewable Energy Bureau, uh, may, may sectoral roadmap uh, until 2040 of around 15,000 megawatts. So, uh, out I understand that, uh, yes, engineer. In I saw that in the PEP. I read the PEP twice eh, over the weekend. Hindi ako nag-date para mabasa ko yung PEP. No? It appears, sir. It appears. But I don't see... Na nakita ko yung growth rates, eh, no? And I'm trying to appreciate your projections to energy security. Ang goal natin ngayon is energy security as... No, it, it's it, number it one in your strategic directions. It but it how do I'm trying to reconcile your projection to energy security? That's what I want to yes. understand. It, it appears, sir, that when we projected that there will be uh, a triple demand for energy by 2040, and almost uh, let's say 50 percent, to be safe, 50 percent will be base load, and for power, uh, almost 30 to. 40% mid merit. That's what's appearing now uh, at the uh, of the data coming from in, um, tata, um, NGCP and 10% peaking. In other words, uh, I, I think it, it matters how 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 would uh, the businessmen would look at on what kind of fuel, including. You cannot separate the fuel to the technology, including the technology that will be put up. So basically on base load, it cannot be denied that 50% uh, would really come from the base load type of technology. Um, um, if I mention that, sir, I it would be really coal and 40% uh, and it would be good. The 40% will be coming from LNG, for example. Uh, that's uh, a good mid merit to peaking, and uh, RE will be uh, uh, a support to the mid merit and peaking. Um, with that kind of uh, system demand, I think it, it also it cannot be separated with the fact that uh, the reaction of the way uh, the energy development will come in by 2040 will also be affected by the. But the kind of demand our grid would would have uh, by 2040. But going by another, you know, basic question: How do you measure energy security? 
can we tell ourselves now, today, that we are energy secure? Uh, sir, um, in our presentation with the National Security Council, uh, we define the energy security as the uninterrupted availability of energy sources at an affordable price. Uh, well, the national security strategy identified were the following, protect, protect energy supply throughout the country, sustain and develop existing energy sources, and develop alternative sustainable and environmentally friendly energy source, sources. Uh, well, there's the element number four, which has been recently identified, which is uh, the energy resiliency. This is more on anticipation, preparation for, an, uh, and adaptation to uh, disruptions and changing environmental conditions. So basically, itong apat po, Mr. Chair, yung, yung talagang pinakage doon sa report sa National Security Council na definition ng energy security and meron na pong kasama and resiliency challenges po ng, ng ating bansa. Uh, Nag-identify po tayo, sir, uh, on the upstream side, uh, there is really the direct relationship of security of energy, resource exploration and development. Wala pong, wala pong kawala dun sa direktang yun na nasa upstream side. Sa downstream side po, which speaks of oil, gas, and coal, uh, we are now dealing with the fuel products supply chain. Uh, so, we're fine with the fact that uh, business driven po basically ngayon ang nangyari sa downstream oil and the 50 percent supplied by refineries out of the 350 around 228 230 uh, are coming from the finished product coming from the two refineries and we are also looking for the fact that uh, based on the uh, consultations with the industry we're trying to look at if there will be an additional refinery for example in in Mindanao vis-a-vis -vis the, the nearest modernized supply of refineries coming from Malaysia, for example, and Indonesia. So these are balan balances of, uh, uh, in the end, bottom line speaks for the decision on the side but of private My, my question, Engineer, is, uh, Director Rino, is ano measure natin ng energy security? Because I, I did some research there, a few measures, no? And, and it's very complex. But we have to choose at least one measure. And ano ba ang, where are we right now? Are we secure or we're not secure? Well, sir, um, first. Actually, we have to have some benchmark first, eh? some ba baseline benchmark. First, on the upstream side, sir, um, um, when you talk about measure, I think the measure really is for us to be able to go into drilling. That's, that I think is the, the best measure because once you drill, you increase your chances. Yeah, index natin, we have to have some, para alam natin kung nasaan tayo, di ba? We know that uh, we're importing 97% yes. of our oil. By that alone, we know we're not secure because uh, if you look at the uh, oil, nasambay ano? I think we import almost 70% uh, from the Middle East. No, so... so I mean, by that alone, medyo um, raise a lot of question marks whether we're uh, uh, putting all our eggs in one basket. So, ang, ang ako lang, may measure ba tayo? I, I, did DOE uh, come up with a measure and as well as a uh, baseline of that measure? So, we know where we are. Yes, sir. Wala kasi sa PEP. I don't Tama. see that in the Tama, PEP. Um, uh, well I'll give you a, ano, can you flash yung... Ako na lang naggumawa uh, ng research. Um, table 3 nga, yung sa trilemma, energy trilemma. This is from the World Economic Council. And if you look at the energy security portion, uh, we're getting worse in that score. Uh, the rest we're doing okay, but uh, in the energy security we're uh, getting worse. And in the rank, yung 74, uh, they grade us as letter C, no? uh, A being the highest. So um, 
definitely ho, in in the eyes of the world uh, we're not secure or we're not energy secure and we, we're getting worse no? and i think it will get worse as malampaya depletes growth rates of re is uh, this mal so we're getting worse but going by your strategic direction uh, number one is energy security seems to me that there is a um, inconsistency between the strategic direction and also the projections uh, here in the PEP. There are policies, but the policies are not quantified. Eh. So, hindi natin ma-reflect dito sa PEP. So, if you go by that measure, uh, we're getting worse in energy security. And the energy security definition nila is basically uh, what uh, the IEA said uninterrupted availability of energy resources at an affordable price. No? But in uninterrupted meaning daming 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 uh, daming facets yan. Like for example, like in coal, in ginagamit ng power plant, ilan ang imported? Mga 18 million metric tons per annum. Po. In percentage terms, ilan ang imported? Uh, it's about uh, Mga 70, sir. 70 percent imported. Saan galing? Sa Indonesia, sir. Almost 100 percent. Uh, sa Australia. Indonesia, no? 94 percent. Indonesia. Indonesia. But if you look at Kalento, last year, anong yan? When was that? 2016, kamuntik na tayo putulan ng Indonesia ng coal. Dahil merong piracy, kinikidnap ng Abu Sayyaf yung mga coal, coal uh, cargo. So if we're saying 70% of our coal is imported, of which 94% comes from Indonesia, and sabi ng Indonesia, baka one day ayaw ko na mag-deliver dyan dahil kinikidnap nyo yung Indonesian, are we secure? Tumataas na rin, sir, kasi yung local demand natin uh, produced by, uh, by uh, Semirara. Mm -hmm. So, we are exporting about 8 million metric tons per annum. So, because tumataas na din yung technology, yung, yung uh, coal produced by Semirara now uh, can be used with this uh, centralized uh, uh, circulating fluidized bed. Kaya, sir, uh, we're looking also at a higher local demand that will be a, a, a feed stock for our uh, for our coal fire power plant. Yes, sir. The point of the matter, Yusek, is uh, um, even though I think it's really admirable that uh, energy security is in the forefront of your uh, energy direction, it's number one no? among the eight pillars of your strategic direction. But nowhere in the PEP has that been articulated. In fact, there's no section in the PEP about energy security, less energy sufficiency. And if you look at the projections, so, uh, we will not achieve any security, any sufficiency. Because in the absence of any uh, articulation of that uh, policy, I will just go by your numbers. And the numbers are not going to be able to do that. But the real figure, sir, to add on your comments, sir, Yung, uh, yung primary kasi is power and non-power, sir, di po ba? So, ibig sabihin, sir, yung uh, although lumaki yung, uh, yung uh, renewable energy by triple, pero because nakasama siya doon sa equation, pati nung non-power, mas nagiging maliit yung, uh, yung porsyento niya. But when it comes to real numbers, naging triple ang kanyang generation. Okay. Not even talking about oil. Pag pumunta tayo sa oil, ho, yun, uh, uh, it, it's, no, no, it, it, it paints the same picture. No? Um, it's not uh, indigenous oil. We're not, we're not uh, harnessing any indigenous oil. So more or less, uh, pag tinignan natin sa energy and petroleum, it's, it paints the same picture. No? And uh, that's why I'm, I'm going by the PEP. Wala kasi hu sa PEP. Eh. And that's my uh, call to the DOE to really put one chapter devoted to security and sufficiency. Uh, because that's number one on your eight-point agenda. 
So, kasi kung hindi natin i-articulate yan, hindi natin mabibreak down yan dun sa numbers, dun sa projections. Pag wala sa projections, uh, bagsak talaga sa security. And I think we should bench start benchmarking now. It's good to uh, say, you know, energy security, but without measuring it, without putting it uh, into uh, the projections, uh, hindi lalabas talaga ho dito. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll come up with that. Sa, sabihan namin yung uh, planning bureau plus uh, yung aming senior uh, USEC, yes. who's really dedicated for this work. Yes. And uh, of course, sir, uh, adding to that, uh, with regards to resiliency, talagang kailangan din yan, infrastructure resiliency nung, uh, nung lahat ng ating energy infrastructure. Plus, kasama na rin siguro yung collaboration nito, sir, nung, nung ating uh, Armed Forces of the Philippines plus the Coast Guard para do sa minention yun na, na piracy. So, we, it needs a lot of uh, collaboration from other agencies to really also come up with securing our, uh, our energy. But we invited also some of these stakeholders who can uh, contribute to the discussion, especially on the, uh, in on the subject of energy security and sufficiency. And um, we'll, we'll, go b uh, we'll start with uh, Ed, um, Kutyongko of the uh, Philippine Petroleum uh, Company, uh, oh, Philippine Petroleum Association, uh, and then meron rin silang uh, 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 comments on how do we achieve security and sufficiency, and ano yung nagiging problema natin yun. Ed? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. <coughs> For the upstream oil and gas industry, which is represented by the uh, Petroleum Association of the Philippines, uh, we just would like to emphasize and to uh, uh, voice out that um, the, the uh, stability of our contracts with PD87, um, with the Department of Energy, would uh, play a major role in um, in our uh, quest for more indigenous uh, oil and gas resource, which is, I think, part of um, energy security and sustainability. Um, we, the, um, the industry has contributed around 10 billion uh, in revenue, uh, 10 billion US dollars uh, from uh, SE38 alone. Um, and um, our um, uh, 20 billion US dollars has been uh, saved from imports from the time we have uh, started uh, production in uh, SE38 in Malampaya. So our um, stand is just to keep and make it more stable, the PD87, um, um, the, the law uh, for oil and gas uh, upstream exploration and development. So with that, we can um, you know, share in uh, nation building in terms of uh, energy security and uh, sustainability. So, um, with the recent um, inclusion of uh, uh, the incentives uh, for the uh, incorporated in the train law, um, we are appealing to the Senate and also the House to uh, make the uh, PD87 as stable as possible, so we can in, um, we can uh, invite more companies in and bring in the needed capital for exploration and development of our indigenous soil. Ed, can you um, give us uh, from your from your standpoint, no? Um, uh, and this is from a commercial standpoint. Mayroon ba tayong uh, chance to achieve? Uh, oil sufficiency or energy sufficient energy self sufficiency in oil is that a realistic um, a realistic goal or is it uh, just a uh, dream? Well, Mr. Chair, it's uh, it's a dream. Everybody's dream to have uh, um, oil and gas sufficiency. But um, in terms of, I, uh, and kasi we're kanina we're o importing 97 yeah. percent, no? Is there a scenario wherein we will actually lower down that 97 percent? Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. We are confident that uh, with renewed exploration and development uh, incentives and uh, programs of the government uh, in terms of uh, bringing in more capital, we can achieve, reduce that dependency to you know a substantial amount if we get a good um, you know, support and uh, incentives from the government. I think it's, you know, just like our neighbors, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Brunei, we are, um, you know, we are, we would like to achieve uh, a better chunk of the indigenous oil to be developed in the, in the country. Do you have a, a, a figure in mind, commercially and realistically, how can we load how can we lower down that 97% up to what point but i looking at the growth rates of oil consumption um, sir that's a little bit complicated because we we are in a very risky capital risk uh, okay, but lower yeah. down to 50% i mean the, uh, ju i'm just coming up with the yeah. um, some uh, no no some uh, if we resolve the issues in South China Sea, in the West Philippine Sea, we can um, open up and uh, see the, the value in the resources within that area. But we need to you know, get it open and, and incentivize um, um, companies to, to invest in the country. Um, I'm, I'm talking about the West Philippine Sea because that's part of uh, where Malampaya is and most of our oil is coming from, uh, oil and natural gas. So um, if we open up that area for development and exploration, we would be uh, better in, in uh, estimating the resource. So your, your request is status quo on the incentives, correct? Uh, of PT87. Of PT87. And, and make it more stable. Okay, make it uh, and, and stability in this policy. Yes, sir. And uh, you said support also. Uh, what type of support are you requesting from government? Uh, support us in uh, giving us uh, more opportunity uh, to, to invest in areas within that uh, West Philippine Sea um, area. Among all the, I think there, there are 16 sed sedimentary basins. Among all of those, alin ang pinakamalaking potential? The Northwest Palawan uh, Basin is the most... Uh, this is where Malampaya is? Yes. Okay. And this is unfortunately where the 9-9 well, line? Correct. And um, the, um, the Recta Bank or the Reed Bank is there and all the other areas which, uh, which are now uh, being... Uh, uh <coughs> no, it's, it's in force majeure, so we, we can't move in until policies are in place. So northwest of Palawan, yes. yan ang pinakamalaking potential. That's the most prolific uh, hydrocarbon basin okay. in the Philippines. And there are two sites there, no? Yung one yung where outside of the nine dash line and one inside. Yung sa outside, is that a potential area? There, there are also uh, servi service contracts, awarded service contracts in that area, sir. Okay. And is that enough to improve our oil self-sufficiency anything would help anything All right. thank you thank you ed and um, jay any reaction to uh, the energy security concept thank you sen actually um w when i left the dui in 2011 uh, 12 the same problems uh continue no for the dui uh, particularly on trying to find indigenous uh, resources. No, but I, I think um, taking off from your question, how do we ensure energy security, I usually factor in five dimensions, which actually have been uh, discussed already. No, one is um, availability, two is affordability, the other one is technology development, sustainability, and regulation. Now let me go to regulation, um, uh, in relation to what Ed ha has discussed, no? um, are, will we be able to meet no, the, the oil uh, demand of the country and avoid importation as we have been doing for the past few years? 
uh, it's possible if we're able to uh, provide the necessary stable regulations. No? Um, and since I left, I think uh, the, the problems multiplied. No? Uh, once upon a time, the problem then was only COA no? and the tax assumption clause, which uh, up until now has not been resolved. No? Um, now it has doubled to the issue of who has the authority to sign the service contract because the Supreme Court uh, decided that all service contracts on oil and gas must be signed by the president, which only means 22 of the 23 service contracts, if we follow the ruling of the Supreme Court, are now considered void no, because they were all signed by the secretaries of energy in the past. No. Uh, those are two important things that I think must be resolved. Number three, of course, uh, Ed already raised the issue of retaining the fiscal incentives. No. Um, comparatively, if we uh, look at our neighbors, no, the Philippines already has the best uh, fiscal regime under PD87. A and yet the question remains, why are they not coming here to the Philippines? No. Um, aside from those two problems, the third problem that I've seen over time is the, the, the way we award petroleum service contracts. No. Um, I guess I'm equally guilty because when we did the PECR4 in 2011 and we already endorsed the award no, uh, and we received the most number way back then, um, I think only a handful were signed no, in the end. And, uh, and while the DOE keeps trying, in fact, they went through PECR5, now they're going through a new uh, round, no, the same problems remain. No. So the question is, will we drill more? I don't think we will attract people I or investors if we have the same problems. No? Um, that's on the oil and gas side. No? Uh, in terms of, again, going back to energy security, uh, number one on my list of dimension is availability. No? And in this regard, this is the reason why we have been pushing for renewable energy. No? Um, I looked at the, the most recent uh, primary energy supply table. No? Once upon a time, sen, uh, way back in 2012, that was about 59% no? uh, indigenous utilization. No? Now we're down to 55. No? That, that doesn't speak well of where we are. No? It means we are importing more. No? And if we want energy security, we have to rely more on our own resources. No? And the way to do that is we look at what, what is available. No? We have oil and gas, but they've been trying so hard, no? uh, not to mention our sedimentary basins are not as prospective as our neighbors. No? But we did find Malampaya. Who knows if we drill more, maybe we can find another Malampaya. Uh, but the problem is, again, all these uh, unstable policies. The Philippines has drilled over 30 wells for the past 30 years. No? Malaysia alone has drilled 200 wells in one year. No, so how can we find more if we don't have more drills, no, more uh, wells? No? Um, but going back to RE, um, and I share the observation of the senator. No, um, unfortunately, based on uh, the PEP, it appears that RE's share is shrinking. No? And if we go back to that table, the primary energy supply, no, I've always raised this as uh, a point no, internally. No? Um, it's always a, a point of debate. No? Um, you look at the primary energy supply and seemingly RE is very high, no? 37%. Um, the, the pie chart. The no? pie chart. Um, I, I, I don't subscribe to that pie chart. No? And I've raised that even during my time. No? Um, and I raised the question of why RE is 37% in the total primary energy supply mix. No, it's worse, by the way, when we talk about power mix. I was hoping, uh, in fact, Director Reno was about to go there, no, the power mix. It's about 24%. No, uh, but 37 is too high. Uh, and, and I think in terms of calculation for the planning uh, unit of DOE, they count the, the, woods, the, the, the wood chips or the wood. No? Uh, in Tagalog, yung panggatong. No? So that's why it's... Kasi yung panggatan sa probinsya, ina-add ho dito sa calculation. No? Uh, kaya lumalaki. Yung panggatan ho sa probinsya, hindi naman ho natin ginagamit for power no? or for energy. That's my view. No? So, and then coal seems to be so low in that. No? Uh, 
Um, so I, I have issues about it, but uh, in short, um, while that seems to show that uh, we are heavily reliant on RE, the utilization of RE for the last four years actually has decreased dramatically. No, whereas in 2011, 2012, no, and uh, back when uh, Ernie and I were still young, no, um, I just have to say that Ernie, sorry. Um, RE was at 35%, all-time high. No. Um, we we have uh, started uh, seeing a decline in utilization of RE, but it goes into that dimension of energy security, stability in regulation. No. Um, and I, I have that, uh, you know, I prepared the slide on all the issues uh, faced by the industry, the renewable energy industry. Unfortunately, it goes back to a, a word that starts with the letter G, no? government. No? And uh, I, I go back to the 200 permits that we need to secure. No? Um, from A to Z, there's an alphabet uh, that's that uh, starts with a government agency concern. No? So we're hoping that the only way really to achieve energy security, you can show it the last slide, no? and I, um, so you will see what uh, we have faced over time. Um, and I guess it goes not just for RE, it goes the same for oil and gas. No? Um, I think uh, theirs is a little bit worse no? because not only do they need to get permits, they can find the oil and gas uh, at the end of the day because the success rate is only one out of ten. No, um, but if you, you go to that the last slide no, where we can show you the multifarious uh, different uh, uh, numerous um, permits that we and issues that we face no, in the industry, and um, uh, I'm beside the uh, Nestor and I, I'm so happy and so glad that Nestor is so busy now from the ERC because finally ERC is complete. No? Uh, but part of the problem also is for the longest time ERC is not functioning. No? And there are 300 uh, pending uh, PS, uh, PSA applications no? pending. Not to mention all other, I can uh, make a run through uh, of those issues. I'll be very quick, uh, Sen. No? Uh, but while you're trying to find it, can't open. Okay, but uh, if I go to my own list. Uh, number one, when we talk about uniform regulation, no? uh, uniform competitive selection process rules, no? uh, all the investors have been asking because DOE has its own set of rules, ERC has its own set of rules, NEA. And of course, sen the, se uh, the Senate also has its own bill. No? There's no uniformity. No? Uh, but I'm hoping, because we had that uh, last public consultation at ERC, we're seeing light at the end of the tunnel, finally. No? And I think it's, it's a draft that almost everybody's agreeable on, no? hopefully including the DOE, no? because they raised an issue on that. Um, there's also that issue of uniformity on awards of power supply agreements. No, uh, one PSA will have a different uh, parameter compared to another. No? Uh, I say that because, as an example, ERC approved, and, and by the way, uh, Your Honor, uh, when we talk about energy security and affordability, as I dimension, the RE has, renewable energy has contributed much to that affordability. No, where once upon a time, solar was 9.68 per peso per kilowatt hour on fit, now it's down to uh, we have seen PSA signed by Meralco at 539, 469, at 320 peso per kilowatt hour. No, so you can see how very competitive uh, renewable energy has uh, become no, in, this in a span of four years. No. And I also don't agree with the position that when we talk about base load, we're only going to talk about coal. That's not true. No, um, because we have a lot of potential for hydro dams. In fact, if you check the DOE, they have a record of renewable energy service contracts on high big hydro dams. And if you look at the benchmark price of hydropower, it's now down to 350 to 375, much more competitive perhaps uh, compared to coal. No? Um, other issues that we have, uh, we continue to push the DOE on the RE mechanisms. No? 
Luckily, the DOE has already approved the RPS for on-grid, RPS for off-grid, no, and the green energy option rules. Uh, this is where ERC na ca now comes into play because they need to approve the framework for the green energy option rules. We are still waiting for the RE uh, market rules, no, the REM rules. That's the last pending mechanism due uh, from the DOE so that we can really fu fully implement the RE law. Um, there are also other ERC matters, the pending uh, COCs, the pending P2P applications, no, the pending extension of biomass and hydrofit. Uh, I've been sharing this with you. No? The NGCP-related ancillary charges. No? Um, we, share, we share the view of the Senate no, and JCPC in trying to lower the costs no, f of electricity, but we don't help in that regard if we double charge. No, uh, because in, in, in what we have experienced is uh, NGCP will collect ancillary charges from the load, which is the DUs, and then at the same time collect the same ancillary charges no, on the generators themselves. No. Ultimately, the generators, of course, will pay, but that is collected from you and me, aside from the fact that the DUs will also collect from you and me. So it's a double charge. We want to reduce the price of electricity, but we need to look at all these inefficiencies. There are other issues as well. Um, the BIR, no, and I heard the BIR is here. No, the law in on RE was passed in 2008. Until now, we don't have the BIR revenue regulations on the Renewable Energy Act. No, uh, we're hoping to do that. Not to mention, until now, and PD87 was passed way back in 1972. Until now, we don't have the revenue regulations for the oil and gas industry. No, um, uh, I hope you bear with me. Until now, ERC and DOE are still working on the retail competition open access rules. If you recall, uh, Your Honor, we have a TRO issued by the Supreme Court. Everybody has been waiting. No? Everybody wants to secure a rest license from ERC, but they have a moratorium on that. No, that rest license will help spur uh, um, new, uh, not only competition, but new supply, because now you can offer directly no, to um, contestable customers. We also have issues on even the retention of fiscal and non-fiscal incentives for RE law, no, because right now the DOF is looking at reducing them. No. So we, we hope to maintain the incentives so we can push for more investments in renewable energy. Um, we also have a lot of pending DOE circulars. No. Uh, the, the amendment to the RE guidelines allowing foreign investors in biomass no, the land rights and possessory rights issue, which until now is just a memorandum, it's not a circular. No, and recently I saw a, an automatic termination of renewable energy service contracts, uh, supposedly for not, de not developing them. No? Um, and then of course, uh, Your Honor, I'll take this opportunity to list all of them. No, uh, the land conversion for renewable energy, until now is a problem, uh, DAR, I understand, has not been issuing land conversion uh, applications or um, requests. The same goes for DA because one of the requirements for DAR land conversion is a Department of uh, Agriculture endorsement. NCIP, Your Honor, um, the process for obtaining a free prior informed consent is uh, just problematic for all the developers. Even a certificate of non-coverage is also a problem. Um, there's also pending with the ERC, the fit adjustment based on the RE guide. I can go on and on, uh, but I, we will submit this, Your Honor. What we hope to do to address your question on energy security, um, it would not be a problem, Your Honor, if all of the investors and in the private sector are able to build power plants. And the way to do it no, uh, is a st stable regulation. No, um, uh, and if we do have all of these and we're able to implement all the laws, I don't think energy will be, uh, security will be a problem because everyone will start building power plants, everyone will start uh, drilling oil and gas, and we don't even have to worry about um, energy security in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Jay, um, it's a very basic question. No? How can, uh, you, you represent now the uh, RE group, no? and uh, your group now, composed of uh, the different RE 
uh, sources like wind, solar, hydro, and geothermal. How can RE, your group, no, the RE group, contribute to uh, our goal of reaching energy security? Well, definitely, uh, Your Honor, supply will be our main contribution. No? A and uh, the reason why we are uniquely positioned, no? unlike conventional fuel like coal, oil, and gas, uh, as we all know, renewables never de deplete. No? The sun will always be up, there will always be water no? uh, and wind, because if we don't, we all die. No? That's why we, we have been pushing for renewables. Um, once upon a time in 2011, we launched the National Renewable Energy Program, and I think that's what uh, Director Rino uh, re uh, referred to earlier. Now that was in 2011. The target then was to increase the RE to 15,000. No? But that year target is 2030. Now that NREP needs to be amended, no? the National Renewable Energy Program, to account for developments in technology uh, once upon a time, under the NREP, the first one, we were nev not looking at solar rooftops. No, but now that has become you know, uh, a new trend. No? Um, because land is so difficult to obtain, now we have a lot of buildings. So we need to amend the National Renewable Energy Program. That was our target in NREP, no? but uh, uh, we, we were not able to finish it. But that certainly will help. RE contribute to this energy security issue. We build more, utilize more our resources here in the Philippines no, uh, uh, on the big show. No? And the good thing about what we have done in the private sector, we have finally organized under one umbrella organization. No? And we will push for common interests. No? So it's Biomass, uh, uh, BREA, uh, Biomass Association is with us, uh, NGAP, the National Geothermal Association, uh, both the solar associations, PSPA and CSDP, have joined us. Ocean, of course, Belpiri is there, and WEDAP and Phil Hydro, all under one umbrella, hoping that we can contribute more. No? That 15,000 should be higher. Uh, it should not be at 15,000. By 2040, we can contribute more no? and hopefully reduce the cost. No? And in fact, we have data that we submitted, uh, Your Honor. Uh, for the last three years since 2014, the RE fit eligible power plants have been able to reduce the cost of electricity uh, for those DUs who buy power from the WESM no, by about 9.5 centavos per kilowatt hour no, to, the, to the tune of about 25 billion pesos. That's a huge savings for consumers. No. Unfortunately, it's not so easy to explain it, no, but rest assured the consumers are able to bear no, the benefit no, of renewable energy. Jay, earlier I showed a slide no, na under the PEP, renewables will only grow by 1.5%. No? Is this uh, consistent with your uh, projections? Actually, no, uh, uh, Your Honor. Uh, we were hoping it would be higher than 1.5% no? yeah, of the 4% average From the, from the, from the PEP, kasi what this tells me is uh, yan lang ang projection ng gobyerno. Therefore, yan lang yung gagawin ng gobyerno. But uh, but you are saying that renewables, you no, know, and I'm not gonna go into you no know, type of technology, you no. Know, but I just want to um, just understand the role of renewables to energy security. And what you're saying is renewable can contribute to energy security, but government will not do more than the 1.5 percent growth, you no. Know? Kasi yun lang tina-target ko, so yun lang yung gagawin ko. So, for example, government will do more. No? Itong growth in renewables, how can we, gano ka bilis pa ang pwedeng uh, makita natin sa renewables? Well, I think, Your Honor, we have seen that uh, exponential growth with the right policy. No? Uh, I go back to 2012. 2013, 2014, when the government finally decided to push for the FIT. No? Uh, of course, there are some, some will not agree, no? but uh, immediately uh, a total of 1,000 megawatts no, of RE was put up in a span of only two years no? because um, the fit was in place. No? Uh, solar, 800 megawatts alone. No? Um, was built in a span of a year and a half. 
no, because everybody was racing to the finish line. Of course, I don't agree with that race no, because in the end there were some problems. But in the end, you can see if there is that right policy, uh, certainly uh, the private sector will build power plants. The absence of fit and looking at technology, no, technology is dropping very fast, eh, exponentially. The cost. Yeah. Um, I don't, ako personally, I don't think this 1.5% is the appropriate pace no? because technology is going down, so adoption is going go going up. So, it should be higher, uh, Sen. In fact, um, this year, no, the DOE issued the landmark uh, RE mechanism, the Renewable Portfolio Standards for on-grid <laughs> areas. No? That's landmark because now all mandated participants, particularly the DUs and the co-ops, no, are required to enter into power supply agreements uh, running on renewable energy resources. No? And there's a reason why it's now mandated. Compared to 2012, where the te to technology of RE is still expensive, now it's very competitive. No? Whereas before, maybe the, R the DUs and the co-ops will sign up diesel generators for their peaking requirements. Now you can offset them against the much, much cheaper uh, renewables like solar and wind. And we have seen that. No? I, I've seen the table. If we can just show the, the um, the merit order effect uh, uh, so that um, we can show it to everyone. Um, but uh, anyway, as they look for that, Your Honor, uh, you can see here this is the current state of development for RE. No? Uh, but look at the potential capacity. No, we have about 23,781 megawatts of potential. Um, and remember, based on the DOE 2040 target, they need 40,000 new installed capacities. If we are able to build all that 23,000, that's already half no, of the requirements. I understand, uh, Director, in 2030, gano, uh, il, il, gano ang new capacity ang kailangan natin by 2030? Sir, the... the 2030. 2030, sir, uh, I'm not really aware back then, but uh, yeah, when uh, I under the PEP, hindi kasi naka-disaggregate eh. Hiningi ko in Excel, hindi umabot sa akin eh. But mm. uh, gaano, kalaki yan? Uh, what I remember, sir, is that... Uh, in terms of demand, ah? In terms of demand. Ang, Sabi na ang natin double. Na, sir, is 17,000 ngayon, yeah. di ba? Sabi mo na double. Yun ang design dati eh, nasa M2OE lang. So, hindi siya... By, 20, 000, by 2030, kakailangan ba natin additional 20,000 megawatts? In most likelihood, sir, sa, sa time na yun. Uh, my my point rin. of asking there is, can you go back to that slide ni uh, Attorney J? Because by 2030, I think I did some rough estimate, mga 21,000 additional kailangan natin. But with RE, it can already fulfill 23 so meaning, if we harness all of these technologies, then we will no longer have to import coal. And if we don't import coal, we increase efficiency, <laughs> and then we achieve security. So that, that's my point. So why not, kanina uh, yung yung potential, why not harness all of those? Kasi ito nanggaling naman to sa DOE. Eh. Mr. Chair, we may clarify if the 23,000 megawatts uh, is uh, based on the capacity factor or it's the still the total uh, potential uh, capacity. S service contracts based on capacity. Yeah. Dependent. So geothermal, mas mataas. Mm. Hydro, mas mataas. No, but the point of the matter is we can harness this. No? The point of the matter, if we want to achieve security, then we harness as much as possible all of this. Yes, sir. Uh, but there are uh, constraints uh, also on harnessing, for example, uh, solar, wind, uh, the intermittent kind of uh, resource, sir, because it has to be studied in line with the, the system grid um, functionality in terms of how it, it's going to operate along with the other uh, 
you know, controlling. Yeah, we understand, no? I know it's more complicated than that, no? It's more sophisticated than just putting uh, hydropower plants. But what I'm saying is, just looking at the nominal numbers, kaya natin to be self-sufficient without building or without importing a single coal. No? Yes, and uh, that's not articulated here in the PAP. Yes, sir. Yan ah, hindi well namin well mahanap the, sa Mr. PAP. Chair, the recent study of uh, coming from the um, consistent output of the NGCP points to around 50% of, uh, of, of the demand referring to the base load. So uh, when you talk about RE, uh, in, in most appropriate position for RE, it, it would be around, uh, it would point to the mid-merit to peaking. So that's around 50%. So uh, I, I think uh, that suffice the fact that if you need around 43,000 megawatt and around 50% will be for mid-merit to peaking, uh, this will be uh, a good source of fuel for power. Actually, Your Honor, uh, hydro there, if you will note, 13,468. That's not peaking. That's actually base load. That's why I, I always try to uh, disabuse the concept of RE only as peaking. Uh, because we do have hydro, we do have biomass. No, those are base load. And geothermal, sorry, uh, Ernie almost got upset at me. No, but uh, geothermal as well, no, as uh, base load. So we do have base load ability. No. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Well, let me just lay down the premises, uh, Mr. Chair. Renewable energy, for example, like solar, uh, has a capacity factor of uh, 16%. Uh, in other words, for every 100 megawatts, it will only deliver 16 megawatts. Assuming, for example, that solar is 20,000, it will only deliver 320 megawatts. So it doesn't necessarily follow that this will uh, synchronize or, or be equivalent to that particular amount that is really needed. Uh, speaking of this uh, renewable energy, uh, reliability, Mr. Chair, of course, biomass is really considered uh, reliable. Even if hydro is considered reliable, we know at times that we have uh, the, the uh, two seasons, rainy and the dry season. And uh, uh, during dry season, hydro does not become reliable. And the geothermal is considered uh, re reliable. Uh, but what we have, the problem now is we have problems in the in investments in geothermal. Although the government is really encouraging geothermal. So we have, we have so many factors affecting uh, the capacity in, in uh, relation to this. That, uh, architect, uh, attorney, uh, I'm being oversimplistic. You know, but the point of the matter is how do we harness all of this to achieve security, take into consideration all the nuances all the technical limitations of this technology. Um, kasi nandiyan na yan eh. Nandito na sa backyard natin to eh. No? So, um, if you want to put security on the uh, agenda, we cannot ignore this potential. Kasi it's here na, in our backyard. No? And uh, um, uh, if may problema tayo on intermittency, then we just have to solve it. No? Yes, Mr. Chair, that's what we call... Uh diversification, to attain security um, among the factors that we are doing right now is diversification. And uh, uh, if we are looking at one example of trying to have security in, in power, uh, we know that among the challenges today is not only the factors that uh, are affecting power right now, climate, issues in climate. And uh, if we talk of reliability, uh, I don't know, no, uh, yeah, climate change. If we talk of reliability, uh, we have problems in coal because of the of uh, the gaseous substances. And uh, LNG, uh, right now, it's being considered as the treated as uh, base load right now for the three 
power plants. And we are now studying an addition to this, the entry, perhaps, uh, Mr. Chair, as you already, of nuclear. That's where we are, uh, have an ongoing study to put in place, if ever, nuclear would be accepted after consultation, uh, laying down the groundwork for nuclear power plant. Because the trend today is nuclear is uh, becoming to be a very reliable uh, source of power vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the issues on climate change. Thank you. Um, well, again, uh, the point of the matter here is what can we use within our backyard that can contribute to energy security? That's the point here. No? And you know, take into consideration all of the different limitations and you know, the uniqueness of the technology, uh, but we have to address that. Eh? No? So, uh, that's why, just like you said, Marco said, we have to make some recomputation with respect to uh, the renewable on energy. Because when we talk of power, it's a different thing because a 100 megawatt power plant, uh, solar power plant is 100 when you talk of power. But when it is already treated or included in the primary uh, energy, it's diluted already. Uh, and so we have to see that because it doesn't mean that when we add in raw number, the percentage goes down. So we have to review that. That's Mr. why I, I said, yeah, I'm being oversimplistic, admittedly. No, but uh, I'm just pointing out a concept. Kayo na humbahala mag crunch the numbers. No? Um, Jay, a anything you want to. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add, uh, Senator, um, th there is a. The NREP, no, the target, uh, and, and the RPS target is 35% by 2040. No, so uh, I just wanted to understand, and, and per anyway, the DOE will, they said, will recalculate. Um, because if the target is 35% by 2040, based on the RPS, then probably that 1.5% growth uh, is a little too small. No, so yeah, it's a computation, I mean, RE by 2040, 17. It will reduce to 17%. Of the, ah. of the total. Of the total, based on business as usual scenario, which is logical because it's only growing at 1.5%. Uh, yeah. no? Versus the others at 6 percent no it's low, it's it's no brainer yeah. Yeah. Er, ernie you're raising your hand and sir i, I think someone's raising your you can join us at the table if you want to participate pa yeah yeah dito ho kayo magte trick or treat lang ho kayo mamaya but ernie any comment thank you mr chair for uh <coughs> just a bit of perspective mr chair i, I think as far as business sector is concerned I, the the major issue affecting business sector actually are two things. No? One is reliability of supply, and the other one is affordability or price, because as you know, business sector is finding it difficult to compete with our ASEAN neighbors who are heavily subsidized, whereas we have, uh, we're not. No? I think on the issue of supply, the major issue that has to be uh, addressed really is that if you look at our demand, I'm, I'm, I'm shifting now from the supply end to the demand side. No? And I think this is the dilemma that the DOE is being faced with today, is that our demand is growing at about 300, 350 megawatts a year, if you look at our supply. And if you look at the demand, sorry, the peak demand, the problem is how do you build, what types of power plants do you build in order to meet this growth every year of 300 megawatts? If our build, build, build continues with its present trend, that's going to be 300 to 400 megawatts nationwide that we need every year that we need to build. No? Of course, part of this is coming from expansion, which is we get into the affordability part of existing power plants. If you look at the mix currently, as we, as Jay Apri puts it, 70% of our mix is coal. Eh? And if you're looking at expansions from the point of view of cost, the expansion of existing power plants can help mitigate, but apparent, unfortunately, it does not address the dependable, uh, the what you call independence issue from from foreign. But our problem now is really supply. No? But one of the things that can be mitigated is really from the demand side, and we call it the demand side management. No? If we look at it, and I think this is where solar, as Jay had aptly pointed out. If we look at solar, solar 
from rooftop, from residential, uh, all the way to commercial, is now becoming a very reliable and uh, a profitable investment. And that's why we're beginning to see the, the growth in, in solar panels. However, if you look at all of the rooftops, because the, the problem is for every one megawatt of solar, if you look at land, you need about 1.2 hectares per megawatt. No? And you can only have so much land available unless you convert your agri land, but then that we get into a different problem altogether. So it's really now rooftop. And if you look at the, the potential demand, I've heard figures of about 3,000. If you look at all the rooftops no, and convert it, there are potential, including commercial and industrial. So from the demand side management, it lessens the pressure to build power plants because you're you're handling it from the demand side. No? And, and that should be addressed uh, in order to or encouraged. However, I, I think the issue here is because we all know train two wants to take out the in incentives. And we go back now to the regulatory regime. No? And that's why it's important to have this regulatory regime. So in summary, Mr. Chair, I, I think if we want to meet the demand, we have to have more fast build power plants. No? Unfortunately, it's a fossil fuel that can build capacities of 300 megawatts. No? Uh, of course, we want to promote renewables, but the point is renewables cannot grow as fast, no? but we need to provide additional incentives. Just to give an example, I think people are wondering why geothermal, we did a presentation to the Honorable Chair way back. No? Um, the problem with geothermal, there are expansion sites, and EDC has expansion options. The problem is competitiveness in terms of the supply. Because when you go even to an existing service contract area, you need to drill new wells, and not all the wells will, will produce. You need with new roads, etc., and so forth. And the price that will come out peso per kilowatt hour cannot be competitive with fossil fuels. So that's the issue that must be addressed as far as geothermal is concerned. And I hope NGAP will make, it, uh, make the presentation to, to Jay. No? So we want to have diversification such that we have we don't rely, if, as you very aptly put it, if anything happens in Indonesia, of course, we look at the IPP and say, yeah, we can always source our coal from somewhere else. That's true. In the case of that time when there was a ban from Indonesia coming to the Philippines, we imported our coal from Australia and the price differential was significant. And that's passed through to the consumer. So we want to develop indigenous, but unfortunately it will take time. And But we must have a stable regulatory regime. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ernie, I think you made a very good point. No, in, in uh, I've seen in modern, uh, modern day strategies to achieve energy security, the demand side is always now a very important uh, um, formula or a very important aspect. In fact, I've seen a lot of uh, literature that uh, that part of their achievement or part of their achieving energy security, dapat my demand side uh, strategy, and um, uh, that will uh, we will encourage um, DOE to incorporate that in the uh, um, energy security um, strategy. Mr. Chair, I would just like to manifest that there's a pending bill energy efficiency taking care of the demand side. So maybe if uh, we could try to work that out in the next uh, con Congress. So Thank you. Sir, uh, um, please identify yourself first before you um, make your comment. I am uh, Marcelo Texon. I work with uh, RJ Habiliano of uh, UFCC. In the past, uh, I work as a planning head of uh, an oil company. I also work in the Department of Energy. Uh, now, if we talk of uh, energy security, we cannot avoid uh, making projections of potential reserves. For example, in the case of geothermal, we cannot compare uh, future supply versus uh, demand, unless we know the potential reserves of geothermal, the potential reserves of hydro. In the past, 
this was being undertaken by PNOC Energy Companies was uh, where I work as a planning head. PNOC EDC then was conducting uh, exploration, delineation of reserves in all possible areas. But when it was pri privatized, there is now a vacuum, there is a gap. That role of PNODC was stopped because if we entrust to the private sector this geothermal exploration, development, and production, they will delineate reserves only in areas where they are given service contracts and which they can develop. In the case of PNOC EDC, it for uh, geothermal, even coal, and in the case of PNOC, in the case of oil and gas, they, uh, they try to um, explore everywhere, even in areas where private sector do not want to go. Now, this uh, information that uh, they gather, they share with others through the, the, through the uh, Department of Energy. They will, the uh, others uh, may buy the information and then apply for service contract in areas which they find attractive. So, PNOC EDC delineate reserves not for its own exploration, not for its own development and production, but for the sake of the nation, even for the private sector. We do not have that uh, instrument of the government right now. In the case of uh, geothermal, so that's what we are lacking. That's what is also lacking in the case of uh, hydro. We must all determine all the rivers where uh, hydroelectric plants can be uh, put up. Now, the problem here is opposition to dam construction. It's because we do not view this as a business uh, venture. They mainly oppose because they will be displaced. But if the government will make its family that will be displaced a billionaire, then they will not uh, oppose. For example, if the expected benefit from a project is one billion pesos, if you allocate 10% to the displaced community, that's 100 million. Uh, for as long as the plant is operating, definitely they will uh, agree. Now, because we do not want to part with 100 million, we are foregoing the benefit of the 900 billion that should have been uh, uh, derived by the country uh, if that project has been pushed through. Now, in the case of uh, oil and gas, when I attended the uh, oil and gas financial management program at the University of Texas at Dallas years ago, uh, there was a day when there was a presentation on the terms and conditions of uh, service contracts for uh, oil and gas exploration, development, and production. When the turn of the Philippines came, the lecturer said, Philippines, very attractive, but no takers. Tawanan sila, parang nanliit ako. So tama yung sinabi kang ina na dapat stable ang policies natin dyan. Hindi yung nagbigay ka ng incentive tapos babawiin. Dahil hindi sila nanunoy sa atin. Da maraming choices eh. Saka tayo, hindi pa tayo uh, proven na oil country. Uh, uh, that was that when I attended that program, meron na tayong Palawan oil strike. Pero ganun pa rin ang tingin nila sa atin. So, in other areas naman, dito sa oil, ang isang kwan dyan, ang isang energy security measure, diversification of sources of supply. Halimbawa, mayroong political turmoil sa Middle East, nag-block ang uh, Strait of Hormuz, hindi makapunta ang kuha. Kamukha ng tanker ng PNO sinong araw. Saan tayo kuha? Meron ba tayong traditional supplier na ibang lugar? I don't know. Tapos, ang isa pa, yung ibang bansa, uh, years ago, ang alam ko, ang Switzerland, ang invent oil inventory nila in terms of number of days consumption, halos 180 days. Tayo at that time, crude oil, 30 days, product uh, inventory, 15 days. Kaya nga noon, pag nag-price uh, increase sa abroad ang one, sa world oil market, hindi tayo magpa-price increase hanggat di natatapos yung 45 days. 
Eh ngayon, nag-price increase doon, buka, uh, bukas price increase tayo. Sum sumunod na linggo, nag-price uh, reduction. Hindi pa tayo nakaka-import ng high cost uh, uh, oil? Eh, kung na, ibababa na naman. Kawawa ang consumers. Napaka-basic niyang kung na yan. At saka noon, Halimbawa na, yung, nag, yung price increase na gusto ng oil companies, ang inaalaw lang yung uh, price based on the cheapest crude oil in the world oil market. Kung bumili kayo ng mas mahal, sorry kayo, basta ito lang. Yung cheapest that can be uh, purchased abroad. Yan ang kinukuha namin. Okay, sir. Any last um, comment? Uh, Merong, kasi itong sa Juan, dito sa although Energy Security, doon sa invitation, meron ding minensyon na yung uh, high prices. Eh, sa totoo lang, I do not believe that the Duterte administration is helpless against inflation. Meron tayong mga solusyon. Halimbawa, tingnan na lang natin itong Juan, itong sa presyo ng kuryente at saka ng tubig. Meron tayong Supreme Court ruling way back 1966 reiterated in November on November 15, 2002 nung magkaroon ng ruling ang Supreme Court that uh, corporate income tax is not deductible. Ano yun? Reiterated yung ang reasonable uh, rate of return ng public utilities is 12%. At saka yun, 12% before income tax. Do sa audited statement ng SGB na sinabmit sa SEC, Way back uh, 2015, 25%. Doon sa audited ng, ng, ng sumulong na taon, 2016, 26%. Yun ay after income tax. Kung before income tax, it's 31%. Meron bang magsasabi sa atin na pag inilimit mo yan sa 12%, bababa ang presyo ng kuryente sa halip na dapat magtaas ang mural ko? Binanggit na na, binanggit ko na ito. Nung ako, doon ako po, nung hearing nung one, doon sa, merong hearing noon, na, nakalagay rito. Mas malala ang Maynilad, 2008, 247% ang return on equity after income tax. Ibig sabihin, sa bawat pisong in-invest, tumubo ng 2 pesos for 7 centavos. E di yung ginagamit ngayong tubo na lang. Sumunod na taon, 147%. Sumunod 80, and so on. Again, mayroon ba magsasabi sa atin, kahit na lawyer na, pag nilimit mo yan sa 12%, jurisprudence yan, that is a law. The law is what the Supreme Court says it is. Eh, hindi bababa yan. Napakasimple po. Kaya sana ngayon, dahil sa harapan nito, kaya, kaya kahit malayo kami, Quezon City, nagtyaga ako magpunta rito para masabi ito. Ngayon, ito yung, meron pa mga iba, pero hahaba na eh. Uh, ito, at saka... Sige sir, paki-wrap up na po. Ito, ito, ito. Ayan, bibigay ko sa inyo. Alright, thank you. Eh, yun Wala na naman akong weekend niyan, sir. <laughs> Kasi sasabihin niyo position paper, eto na. Dati walang title na position paper, pero baka kaya hindi tinitingnan din yan. Ilagyan ko ng title na position paper sa ibabaw. Alright, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Teddy Reyes, any any comment po? Of the uh, petroleum... Uh, Good morning, Mr. Chair, and the rest of the resource persons. <coughs> From the point of view of, uh, of the oil downstream oil industry, since our topic today is energy security, energy, su energy supply sustainability, um, w I remember that way back, way back the time that there was a, uh, an energy planning uh, or a forecast of the energy demand on the short term, medium term, and, and long term, we went as far as 30 years. I guess the latest uh, energy planning uh, document that was available where it went to about to about 30 year forecasts about when, when it was 2030, the, the energy plan up to 2030. Now when it comes to the downstream oil industry, the downstream oil industry, I mean, I am mean, referring to the oil, oil uh, demand. We are the, we are growing at about uh, four to five percent on the average a year. Um, before it used to, the uh, downstream oil industry consumes only, or the consumers 
uh, where our the, the 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 downstream oil industry accounts for about 250 200 300,000 barrels per day now we are at 456,000 barrels per day so there is an economic uh, theory that for every 1% uh, growth in GDP, there is an equivalent 1% uh, growth in uh, oil demand. Now, uh, if we take into consideration the impact of, and I'm referring to the pure fossil, not the, and uh, excluding the contribution of, of ethanol as well as the, the CME. Now, uh, with one-to-one one -one, uh, relationship, we could easily uh, reduce it to about uh, 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 of the, of the pure, e pure oil demand, or we, could we term it as, we term it as uh, net fuel versus the total uh, demand, which is combination of net fuel and the, and the, uh, and the uh, biofuels. Uh, also, I did some calculations here, and uh, considering about four percent growth for the next thirty uh, for the next years, about twenty-two years, and therefore twenty forty from now, uh, downstream oil industry will easily uh, arrive at uh, we will be easily attain a two to three times of what we have now. So we're talking here of uh, one million barrels per day from 456 now. Uh, the questions are how do we sustain, sustain or how do we expect, or how did we assure sustainability? And our definition of sustainability and security is that as far as possible, the, the demand for petroleum products can be supplied locally. Of course, we cannot we cannot make, uh, we cannot easily forget about about the supply of petroleum products. Right now, I think it's about 55 to 60 percent local and the 45, 40 to 45 percent imported petroleum products. If you talk about sustainability, we're talking here of refineries, refineries that can uh, produce the products that we need. But in in the so-called putting up refineries, the first consideration is price or the cost. Right now, a very simple refinery can easily can easily fetch fetch about two to three billion dollars. And so that's that's not a that's not a uh, a, a, a a small investment. That's a quite a big investment. Now, um, also when you say a refinery. If you consider about a million barrels or 800,000 to 1 million barrels demand in the next 20 years, you can easily say theoretically then refineries can easily be or that can easily justify the putting up of refinery. But there are a lot of factors when you say you put up a refinery. First, what kind of products do we need 20 years from now? Because the nature of the products that will be demanded by the market dictates what kind of refinery you have to put up. At the same time, you have to, to have to find out what crude are available that can produce these products, whether it's diesel, gasoline, jet fuel, or LPG, or kerosene. Because the amount of the, the, the kind of food that you're gonna purchase or import will dictate the kind of refinery you have. So what I'm saying here is there are so many unknowns. There are so many factors to consider if we want to put up a refinery. Will the refinery answer? Will they, they will be putting up additional refinery the answer to assure sustainability? Um, so the first thing that we have to make sure is that this demand can be considered an official demand. Because right now our our all companies here, the local oil companies definitely have their own planning departments. They have their own departments which forecast demand. But in dealing with banks, in dealing with financiers, in dealing with creditors, I guess the creditors will refer to what is the official forecast. 
of the government as far as demand is concerned so that you can work backwards on whether there is a need for a local refinery, additional capacities to meet that demand. So it's very important that government should be able to put up official forecast of the demand of petroleum products for the next 10, 15, or 20 years. Now, if this demand becomes official, then when, when the uh, planners of the respective oil companies will do pencil pushing, then this will be the guide in their decision on whether to continue importing, to, to go into expansion, or to put up refineries, additional refinery. So these are the things that we have on hand to support the uh, objective of this hearing on how the downstream oil industry can support the Senate and the legislative and the legislature to find out how to assure that sustainability can be assured. Uh, so, ang kailangan po talaga natin is, of course, cer certainty. There must be an a semblance of certainty, both in policy, both in quantitative measures of the demand in the future. This should have to be ascertained, more or less, so that there is a, the, the players, the players in the industry can have a better grasp of what should happen in the next five 10, 15, 20 years, as far as the downstream oil industry is concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Teddy. Uh, next will be Attorney uh, Ocampo of PEPOA. Any, any comments, Attorney? Uh, thank you, uh, Senator. Uh, as a representative of uh, the uh, distribution utilities, I would just like to make some few comments. No? Um, <coughs> Before the IPIRA was enacted in 2001, it was the government through the National Power Corporation who was responsible for the procurement of power supply. And that assured the country of uh, long-term energy security uh, in supply. However, in the, with the enactment of the IPIRA in 2001, government is no longer allowed to do procurement of power supply. It was uh, devolved now, it was now transferred to the private sector uh, who is now responsible uh, for energy procurement of power supply. Now, uh, to fill in that void uh, left by the government, uh, it fell upon the uh, distribution utility as the wholesale uptaker of power supply. So, uh, uh, the distribution utilities entered into these power supply agreements through long-term contracts. And that, for a time, assured the country of uh, <coughs> energy security in power supply. Uh, however, uh, as you know, aside from the privatization of the uh, government assets in generation, it was also the objective of the IPIRA to introduce restructuring of the power industry. Uh, by restructuring the power industry, it introduced competition uh, in power uh, supply so to make uh, electricity uh, affordable. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, it also, the IPIRA also introduced uh, retail competition, uh, meaning that uh, the consumers themselves, the contestable market, would be given the choice of uh, where to source their power supply requirements. So with that, uh, eventually, uh, uh, with the declaration of the threshold for uh, contestability, <coughs> the responsibility of the distribution utilities uh, to procure power supply is uh, gradually being uh, transferred now to the contestable market. So uh, uh, distribution utilities, uh, now we, now we, we have this retail competition for, uh, for customers with a demand of at least one megawatt. Now it's down to 750 kilowatts. With that uh, occurrence of uh, retail competition, 
uh, there is now a contestable market at 750 kilowatt. Uh, uh, most of the contestable customers have uh, opted to source their own power supply. So much so that the long-term contract entered into by distribution utilities, at some point they have become stranded. Uh, so, uh <coughs> and uh, these are long-term contracts, no? Uh, so they have to sell this excess capacity to the OSM. Uh, right, so with that experience, uh, distribution utilities are now more cautious in procuring new power supply agreements because of the threat of stranded contract cost. Uh, anyway, the, uh, the responsibility is now of procuring power supply is shifted now to the contestable market. And uh, if we are to follow the uh, formula of the IPIRA, that threshold for retail competition would still be gradually going down. Uh, as what the IPIRA has prescribed, retail competition will eventually go down to the household level. So, uh, uh, so utilities now would be more very cautious now in procuring power supply. So the responsibility of ensuring energy security is now placed upon the uh, consumers, eventually down to the household level. And aside from being cautious, there is now uh, this new uh, recent development where distribution utilities, when they procure power supply, uh, re their requirements, they would have to undergo a competitive selection process. Now, this, is, this has made the process uh, of procuring power supply uh, more difficult for the, <laughs> for the distribution utilities. So, uh, <coughs> uh, first of all, with retail competition, they cannot forecast what will be their energy power supply requirements in the uh, medium to the long-term uh, horizon because some of those demand uh, requirements uh, will be shifting to the competitive market. So they, can, uh, they have no way of knowing. So to stay on the safe side, they will be very conservative in procuring new power supply agreements. And, and if they do, they do uh, proceed to procure power supply agreements, they would still have to contend with these uh, requirements on the uh, competitive selection process. Right now, there are two rules on cons competitive selection process. We have one from the ERC and another one from the DOE. And the rules on the CSP of DOE and ERC do not uh, tend to be in conflict with each other. No? So utilities do, do not know who to follow, whether it is DOE or ERC. Probably they'll follow the ERC uh, rules because ERC is the one responsible for approving their PSAs. Now, uh, going forward, no, uh, what, what do we do in, this, in that scenario? Uh, how do we go about uh, uh, working under that environment? <coughs> so, if utilities are now very conservative in uh, moving to procure power supply requirements, uh, uh, how would the investors in power, uh, power generation go about? Uh, before, right now in the Philippines, the model is still project financing. Uh, no new plants will be built unless there is a power supply agreement and preferably a long-term contract. No? Without a long-term contract, uh, these power plants cannot be financed and built. Uh, so uh, <coughs> there are hardly any uh, demand for new power supply uh, agreements or long term at that, where do they go? Uh, wha one possible avenue would be to build a merchant plant and sell their capacity to the uh, wholesale electricity market. Uh, right now the, uh, the WSM price is uh, I think lower no? on the average 
than what was contracted under the long-term contracts. So it, if a utility opted to, to be conservative and procure a larger portion of their requirements from the WSM, they would be benefiting from a lower price. Now, uh, also, if, you, if a utility buys direct from the WSM, they don't have to contend with those CSP rules or PSA approvals. Uh, it is automatically uh, uh, approved to be passed on to the consumers. So it is more easier to buy power from the WSM. So if, uh, it is easier, probably if the investors would like to gamble uh, their, their, uh, their investment, why don't they build a merchant plant and sell everything to the WSM? So uh, <coughs> it would, so wha what is the policy, no? Uh, the policy of the IPIRA is to go eventually to <coughs> retail competition down to the household level. And if that were the direction that we're moving, by the way, the, the, the timetable for bringing down the threshold for retail competition is at, uh, now at a standstill at 750 kilowatt. So what do we do? Wha what is the direction? Because for as long as you delay the declaration of the threshold of uh, the uh, retail competition, uh, we're, we're it's a guessing game for all the stakeholders, no? Uh, do we bring it down further, uh, the level of retail competition, or do we stay at 750 kilowatts? Because if we stay at 750 kilowatts as the threshold for retail competition, uh, utilities would still have the need to procure uh, power supply agreements to ensure energy security <coughs> uh, so they can uh, have a supply for the captive market. But if the threshold for retail competition is eventually going to go down, uh, there would be the threat of standard contract cost. So they have to have to be uh, on the uh, uh, waiting game to see what would be the direction, what, would, what is the policy. Because if it's going down, then let the contestable market do the procurement of their requirement, uh, power supply requirement. So we are now at that level now uh, where we don't know where we are going. Although the APRA is already has already prescribed that tre at the retail competition should go down to the, at ultimately to the household level. So uh, we have to get more, uh, get clarity, uh, probably from ERC. Uh, what do they do? They, they're saying that they, they're not moving forward on retail competition because of that Supreme Court TRO. By the way, that, that Supreme Court was brought, was filed only because ERC mandated a compulsory contestability uh, from uh, our position at PIPOA, the distribution utilities, we were uh, we were arguing for a uh, voluntary contestability because the objective of uh, competition uh, was to make electricity affordable. Now, if a contestable cost will shift to a to the contestable market and it would be more expensive for him to ship there's no is there's no uh, sense uh, shifting to that more except more expensive uh, uh, market so uh, we argued for a voluntary contestability but ERC would not agree to that uh, Initially, we, we, we thought of, we filed a case at the RTC, but it was uh, 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 enjoined by the Supreme Court. So that is where the case is now, at the Supreme Court. And uh, because of that uh, injunction that some contestable went to the Supreme Court, uh, e uh, and they got an injunction, everything is now at the standstill, in so far is as implementation of IPIRA is concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. The, uh, our COA topic is a whole new, different dimension. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that uh, later on. Uh,
probably in the next uh, during the next hearing. Thank you, Attorney. Yep. Sir, we'll we'll uh, let everyone speak first. Mag mag uh, take note muna ho kayo because we have a few more speakers. So we'll uh, go one round and then later on we'll ask you to. Uh, um, we also have a representative from Shell. Meron ba ho dito? Wala na ho yun. O si Ted na yun. Si Ed na yun. Okay. And then, um, um, PNOCEC, I think we have a representative from PNOCEC. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we will make our statement very brief. Uh, PNOC Exploration Corporation is the only um, government-owned uh, and controlled corporation uh, operating in the energy industry. Our basic mandate is to explore, uh, develop, and uh, produce, uh, as well as utilize energy resources. Uh, we are uh, into the upstream and downstream business, downstream business, and uh, we we are aware we are aware of uh, the urgency of uh, energy um, sufficiency and uh, reliance and uh, sustainability, and um, we are uh, very active in um, uh, exploration. Uh, we have uh, several service contracts. And we have uh, several uh, co coal operating contracts. And we are uh, doing our best uh, to uh, uh, explore and uh, discover um, these fossil fuels. In fact, we have uh, a discovery well in uh, Isabella, in Mangustin. And we are in the process of uh, confirming uh, uh, that discovery. Um, several uh, coal operating contracts um, in uh, Sambuanga Sibugay, uh, 184, the, the two uh, COCs have been uh, energy projects of uh, national significance. Uh, with, with these um, uh, con contracts, Mr. Chair, we hope that we can contribute uh, to the energy um, uh, sufficiency and uh, reliability in this country. Um, on the matter of um, uh, issues uh, being uh, faced by the company, we share we share the the issues articulated by the Petroleum Association of the Philippines. Uh, uh, more uh, particularly, uh, the the personal signature of the president on service contracts, and uh, the the potential potential deletion of the bent incentives. Uh, stated in uh, Presidential Decree Number 87, and uh, of course uh, the COA notice of, notice of charge issues, which uh, which are pending uh, before the Supreme Court. Um, on, on the downstream side, Mr. Chairman, we would like to confirm uh, the statement of uh, Under Secretary Donato Marcos that uh, indeed we have been uh, um, asked and mandated to. Uh, to provide a relief to the rapid increase in uh, uh, fuel prices, uh, most especially diesel, and um, we uh, we uh, we will uh, uh, we will we are in the process of evaluating uh, the the importation of uh, diesel fuel, and uh, we we will ensure. That the importation will be to the best and uh, most advantageous uh, uh, arrangement, uh, not only for the company but for the country. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, thank you Attorney. Actually, um, well, the mandate of uh, is to explore, no, to contribute to the indigenous sources. But medyo na confused ako because you're importing. So medyo hindi yata, no, I don't think it's aligned to your mandate of uh, contributing to indigenous sources. But uh, on the other side is uh, you are importing 50,000 metric tons, I understand, no, from the news report. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. So um, I think uh, that's actually um, 
not in line with the mandate no, of uh it's part of the uh purpose purposes of uh pianos we see your honor it's part of the articles of incorporation yes i i know but uh um strategically i don't think that is the intention of ec no uh, sana pinalitan na lang ng pnoc importing company or trading company na lang no? uh, it's exploration no that's why strategically it's named exploration because it, it's the vehicle of the government to expand its indigenous sources no? even though it's allowed under the carta to explore more and with of uh, oil exploration. Uh, so, timeline? As well, just a, a, a timeline. Ano ba yung generate ng PNOCEC in terms of indigenous sources? What we're sure, what we're sure, Mr. Chairman, is that we have a discovery well in uh, Isabella, that's Mangustin. Um, we're going, we're, we are in the process of uh, megawatts of natural uh, gas natural gas sorry well and to, to to see uh, if there is uh, commercial quantity so aside Underneath. from that isabella wala na po um, th th there are uh, offshore farm ins lang siguro and uh, it's it's uh, but the Isabella one is purely onshore, Mr. onshore, purely PNOCEC activity. That's correct, Mr. Okay. Chairman. And uh, 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 it's uh, no, no more uh, oil and gas uh, for coal. For coal, we have okay. we have uh, one to two also in Isabella. We have uh, five, uh, COC 185 and 186. And COC one, uh, COC forty one, and that's operating. Um, COC forty one, it's operating. Yes, uh, but but uh, merely for a small scale uh, mm -hmm. mining for now. Okay. But uh, we are in the process of developing uh, an area, an area to to uh, restart uh, major production. Okay, but I don't see that here also in the PEP. Uh. I don't see that anywhere in the PEP. The which one? Yan yung mga na mention mo, yung coal and. On our website, Your Honor. Uh, but uh, can you please submit to us that uh, what you mentioned earlier and also the timetable? Because um, again, no, PNOCEC is the vehicle, the vehicle of the government to achieve um, energy self sufficiency. Yes. And Your Honor. Um, that's why um, we want to understand. Uh, what are the service contracts that you are currently exploring and what are the potential and what is the timetable? Yeah. Other than the one you mentioned, uh, no other areas pa ba? Y yun lang po. Uh, Tatlong areas lang? Apat po. Uh, Apat na areas. One, two, two, one, eight, five, one, eight, and six, two, four, two, those four areas are producing no sir, no sir uh 185 186 will start uh, okay will start uh, that's wholly owned by pnocec yes yes sir. okay so you will operate and uh, extract coal uh, in that area uh, we, we will explore we will explore and develop with respect to production we we, we intend to uh, find a joint venture partner okay okay so please submit to us the time frame uh you mentioned four coal areas and These are the C what we have in the horizon. Yes, Your Honor. Uh -oh. Okay.
be uh, sa ERC na rin, no? If you're any comments so sa ERC. Uh, yes, good good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, as to the issue of uh, ensuring and attaining energy, energy sufficiency, long-term energy sufficiency and energy security, I think we share the same uh, views and opinions of the other energy stakeholders, which is we need to come up with a more stable and a more uniform regulation, which these all boasts that how the government efficiently and effectively address the issues. Uh, this includes the administrative agencies such as the ERC. Now speaking uh, far as the Energy Regula Regulatory Commission is concerned, uh, I think it's a common knowledge that for a period of time, uh, we are, let's say, non-functional. Um, we failed to uh, act and resolve certain applications such as RE, Renewable Energy Applications, uh, PSA and FIT on in relation to this, COCs and biomass, and GCP related uh, charges and other policies and guidelines. We failed to implement those. But now with the presence of four commissioners and the chairperson and myself, uh, we make it a priority that we would be able to resolve and address this uh, pending applications, except probably with our COA issue, sir, uh, Mr. Chair, because of the pending uh, TRO. Um, this is also consistent with the mandate of our chair, which is a zero backlog policy. Now, I hope that uh, with these measures, uh, the ERC, as the regulator, uh, would be uh, somehow contributing in attaining and ensuring the long-term energy security and efficiency. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. Uh, NPC, any, sir? <coughs> Good, mo <coughs> Good morning, Mr. Chair. <coughs> uh, international strategy to ensure energy security and energy self-sufficiency in view of the con continuing increases in board prices. We are great users of... Uh, we are <coughs> big users of oil. So what, what we mean by we have to secure our supply of oil and to have efficiencies. Uh, we have small projects of, uh, of solar, solar PV to share its efficiency, but we will uh, discuss more of the security of supply, of, of how to deliver fuel in the island. I have some mm, presentation material if you want to see. Um, you can just uh, elaborate quickly and then Submit to us na lang po yung presentation materials. Okay. Uh -oh. it's more of the delivery. Opo. Delivery sa fuel. Ano lang po, um, just a uh, synopsis Snapchat. of your presentation. The, <coughs> the delivery of fuel of our, our plants, we have 15 day inventory and almost two, uh, but the delivery is affected by the weather. From the oil depot, we, we we deliver by tank trucks, then small bank cover pertains to small areas. And we, we even throw the drums in, in the water and collect it in, uh, on shore. So how, and we have uh, some areas where we took the drums and take uh, by Kulig League. It's, it's heavily dependent on the available transport in the island. So that's how we deliver our fuel. So we are going to how to secure that is the issue. But thank you. Well, thank you. Um, parang nung nakarinig ko kayo, parang ewan ko kung nagpo-progress tayo or re-regress ho tayo, eh, no? Um, but in any case, uh, uh, Philreka, any comments? Ho? Good morning, committee chair and to all the resource persons. Um, the Philippine Rural Electric Cooperative Association uh, we fully support the exploration on renewable energy. And, and as far as we are concerned, um, the National Elect Electrification Administration has already covered the 100% energy distribution target. So right 
how we are working with the DOE. Uh, we were present during the workshop uh, last week. So we are part of the technical working group that would work on the um, defi definition of the renewable energy region in the Philippines. So thank you. Thank you, and Meralco. Any any comments for? Yes. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair, Senator Mitchell Yan. Okay, so. Um, Actually, many have been said uh, about achieving uh, self-sufficiency. So, let uh, let us uh, focus more on the affordability aspect. No? So, actually, in terms of uh, Miralco's rates, uh, actually from uh, 2012 to uh, 2017, electricity rates actually have uh, gone down no? uh, on all bill components: uh, generation, transmission, system loss, uh, distribution. All have uh, decreased except for the items of fit all and universal charge have uh, continued to increase. So uh, actually for Meralco's captive customers, uh, actually the, the share of oil is actually just 1% um, of total supply. So uh, Meralco's customers actually uh, not affected directly by oil prices, but indirectly by oil higher uh, oil world oil prices through increases in the Malampaya natural gas price. So uh, actually in terms of uh, supply uh, source, Meralco's captive supply from Malampaya natural gas is around 50%. So now we observe that uh, Malampaya natural gas actually moves with the crude oil prices. So actually if the world crude uh, prices uh, go up, this translates to increases in the Malampaya price, which in turn pushes the generation cost to go up. Actually, in the first nine months of the year, uh, Malampaya natural gas price has uh, already increased by around 10%. So uh, higher wo world crude prices also uh, increase government proceeds from uh, royalties. Because as we know, Malampaya natural gas is priced in uh, uh, dollars, U.S. dollars, so also with the peso depreciation, it also pushes the government proceeds from royalties to increase also. And in another aspect, since uh, these uh, fuel, uh, the prices are vatable, then when the generation cost from power plants using Malampaya natural gas, when this uh, fuel uh, price goes up, VAT on collections of the government also increase. No? So, we feel that since uh, Malampaya uh, fund comes from electric uh, consumers, the government actually can use it to shield electri uh, electric electricity consumers uh, nationwide from having to pay higher uh, public policy charges, like the universal charge, which actually increased uh, at, the st at the start. It was 4 centavos. It actually now is around 30 almost 38 centavos. So uh, the universal charge increase actually increased threefold, actually from 2012 to 2018. And there are still pending uh, applications on the universal charge amounting to around 117 billion in the ERC. So there are further increases uh, along the way when it, is, it gets approved. Now, um, in on uh, going back to energy security, uh, we will morale to support uh, actually DOE initiatives and legislative measures that aim to uh, streamline the permitting process for power projects because uh, more supply and capacity that will come online on time will ensure that power prices are competitive. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. How big is coal in your energy uh, yeah, supply? Actually, it's around 22 percent. 20? Around 22 percent. 22 percent. Uh, I, I don't know if you have this number, no, but this if you can give us a rough estimate. Uh, since earlier it was mentioned that almost uh, 70 percent of our coal uh, is being imported, I would assume that 22 percent of your mix in 70 percent is imported coal then. And um, 
coal has been fluctuating also this this year. No? Um, do you have a benchmark wherein, pag tumaas, let's say for every dollar increase in coal prices, magkano ang presyo na pinapas on sa consumers? No, can you? Uh, actually, don't have the exact figure. We, we can provide the. But being a pass on, if coal prices increase, definitely po yung uh, electricity bill will also increase. Yes, sir. The very nature of the pass through cost, sir. That's the very That's nature of the pass through cost. And this year, uh, do, do you have any numbers that will uh, indicate that very nature, how much ang tinaas niya because of that pass on due to coal? prices do you have do you have that right uh, no now? sir i don't have the figure okay. we can we can provide yeah, please submit please. to us na lang but uh, ang basic concept pag tumaas ang presyo ng coal being imported uh, tataas rin ang presyo ng kuryente natin yes sir uh, together with other other fuel sources okay. together with other fuel other sources fuel. no but i'm just uh, harping on coal because of its uh, imported ano no um, imported uh, because it's being imported yes sir uh, 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 to two aspects, uh, the g general prices of coal and also the peso depreciation will also Correct. impact yeah. on the electricity bill, sir. Okay. Well, we, when you import, the peso weakens also because of our current current account balance. Yeah. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Arcelia, dito pala kayo. Hindi ko kayo nakita. Uh, any comment po? Doc? Uh, thank you, uh, Senator. Uh, just wa several comments on the issue of uh, security. Uh, for the, uh, from a national perspective, it will be important for everybody to know that Saudi Arabia, the world's biggest producer of oil, is going to build nuclear power plants. So that gives perspective on when you have the biggest uh, oil producer going to build nuclear power plants on what they see. And UAE, another very big uh, producer, has already two built nuclear power plants. And uh, anyway, um, I don't. It will be a political decision uh, for the UAE if, we, if we're going to consider nuclear uh, nuclear power. But these are, you know, <laughs> it will be. Uh, these are important things to consider, especially when you're talking about uh, avi uh, affordability and base load uh, availability. Uh, from that perspective. And then another perspective also on uh, renewables, I fully support, uh, being a geologist too, uh, I, I, I really think that renewables should, I agree with you, that a lot of our power requirements could actually be sourced from renewables. The problem though with geothermal, the big fields have already been discovered. So which means that uh, the discoveries will not be in the big fields like Tongonan, it will be in the smaller fields, mga 50, 100, few hundred megawatts. So you cannot put a lot of hope that geothermal can solve uh, that, that those issues. The same thing with hydro. We are island uh, composed. We're not like Vietnam that, uh, that are contiguous. So there was an experiment with many hydros many years before that uh, uh, didn't become quite successful. Now, uh, Going back to uh, the last one uh, on, on, on nuclear, of course, it's, uh, it's controversial, I know, but uh, the cost of, as we've seen it, when we visited the Crisco nuclear power plant, it's one-tenth. Of course, the, the problem there is that the initial capitalization, but over 60 years, um, the, the plant is much lower. And then, for the record, I'd, I'd also like to put, if the cost of a, uh, of a if the cost of a uh, uh, refinery is about one or two billion dollars, the cost, for example, of fixing the BNPP will be about a billion, according to the South Koreans, which is more or less the cost of a uh, right same power cost of a uh, of a uh, uh, same capacity cost of a, a coal plant. So these are just some some factors to consider. Uh, if the government should decide to go nuclear, and I, looking at the, the growth rates and looking at the dependence, I don't, frankly, and from my perspective, I mean, I, we will not be doing a service if we don't consider nuclear in the mix. 
because number one, it will be persistent, clean, and very cheap. For example, a nuclear power plant, you only fuel it every 18 months. The, uh, if, if the BNPP were operating right now, 620 megawatts, the nuclear fuel needed to power that for 18 months will fit in my pickup truck as compared to 51 ships of uh, 50,000 uh, Panamax, 50,000, which is coal. Now, we don't have uh, uranium here, but uranium is far easier to, to import because it's much more common than coal in the world. We can actually source uranium if, if need be. There's a small deposit in, uh, in Cam Norte that was not de uh, developed because uh, there was no plan to do, uh, to do it. Anyway, this is just the, the consideration. Uh, for, for if you're talking about security and affordability, and also lack of pollution, because nuclear power plants have zero carbon dioxide uh, emissions. The only problem with nuclear is disposal of nuclear waste, which happens to be my research uh, for the past 10 years. I have a solution for the disposal of nuclear waste if we come to that uh, portion of the, of the, of the argument. Po. Thank you, po, Senator. Doc, uh, we will talk about nuclear for um, power no, in depth on a later hearing kasi mahabang usapan yan. But what we want to understand, how nuclear as uh, an energy source contribute to the energy security of the country. No, that's what I want to focus on. And if you can share your thoughts on that. It, it, it I think it has, uh, first, in, in terms of number one, for energy security, number one, it, will, it is a persistent source of, of, of power. I mean, it's not like uh, uh, hydro uh, that, you know, that will be dependent on weather. It's base load power. There are 450 nuclear power plants in the world. The U.S. has 100 nuclear power plants. So if people say it's unsafe, why does the U.S. have 100 nuclear power plants? France has 60, uh, Japan has 55. China is building at least 20 nuclear power plants as we talk. So, Libya, the biggest oil supplier, is actually building nuclear power plants. Why are we not considering it? So that's just the, that, that's uh, that's the. Uh, there's of course a negative perception on the on the on the matter, but I think that, um, as you say, I mean, given the chance, we can discuss it. But that's a very important consideration for in the low cost available, but uh, public perception is not. Uh, 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 uranium is imported also. Yes, I, I understand. I, I know. We have 600 megawatts of uh, capacity mm. from, let's say, BNPP. Yes. We have to import uranium. Paano kung hindi tayo bentahan ng uranium? Actually po, uh, IAEA guarantee that. Kasi, uh, hindi pwede, kasi ang oil dati, uh, nung bata pa ako, nagkaroon ng OPEC, di ba po? Na, na, na siya, na cartelize siya. Now, IAEA, in order to guarantee not, no cartelization, it actually has set up a nuclear fuel repository in Kazakhstan. So no country can actually uh, cartelize the, you know, the, the supply. Is uranium readily available? Yes. Assuming lang, assuming oh, po, po, we po. cover... Napakadali pong kunin ng uranium. Who are the biggest supplier? as easy as coal or let's say... Much, much easier than coal to get. The suppliers are basically... Uh, the biggest suppliers are Canada, Australia, and Kazakhstan. The, the only reason why they're not mining it is that uh, there are uh, not as much demands. But I'm willing to bet, I c you know, we can actually, kung mining lang pong pinag-uusapan, it's easier to mine uranium than, uh, than coal. What are the reasons for countries not selling to the Philippines? Lang uranium? Lang uranium. Wala naman pong reason na hindi sila nagbenta. We actually... So basta gusto natin, bibentahan tayo. Oh, oh, oh magbenta po yan. In fact, uh, during 1986, the fuel for the BNPP was already... Uh, Wala bang regulation yan? Like, for example, if the country is uh, has some, um, I don't know, uh, terrorism ah, okay. issues. All right. Uh, all right. Regarding that, po, no? uh, there are no restrictions on uranium sales. Because... For uh, power. Uh, this is for yes, power. Yes, for power. Uh, 
because m mainly because the, the, the fuel that you are going to power nuclear plants only contains 4% uranium oxide. A nuclear bomb contains 99%. So which means that actually it's, not <laughs> it's very difficult to build a uranium bomb. You will need tons of that and enriched. So, kaya nga walang terrorist na gumagawa ng uranium bomb eh. the, 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 the only restriction will be if you, for example, if the uranium fuel is going to be uh, reprocessed. Kasi yung 4% pong yun, pagkatapos gamitin, hindi na uubos yun. Pwede pang i-reprocess. And countries like the U.S. and France are reprocessing, and Russia. Pag nag-reprocess po, that's when you produce plutonium. And plutonium is the bomb material because you only need 20 kilograms to, uh, to make a bomb vis-a-vis -vis several tons of uranium. So uranium is no problem. We have a, we have a, work, we have a research reactor at UP. I mean, at, at, at yung itlog po dyan sa, ano, sa PNRI. It still contains fuel. Earlier that uh, in Camp Norte, there's yeah, deposits the of uranium. May Pero, uh, is that yeah. a possible source? I mean, if ever papasok talaga tayo dyan in the future. Pwede kunin yung Camp Norte. Pwede pong kunin din, for example, nag import po kasi tayo ng phosphates for our, uh, for our ano, Philippine Philphos. Yung tailings po niyan, may uranium din. In fact, IAEA has funded us to study the, uh, the recovery of uranium from this phosphate tailings. But that Camp Norte is proven. O or ano pero lang yan, that's uh... Hindi, may, may studies na po, pero hindi lang the, the studies could not be. First, why will you mine it when you can... Basically, a uh, matter of cost. Put much effort into it simply because you can, you can easily buy it. No, uh, my, my point there is uh, we're talking about security, self-sufficiency yes. in line with that philosophy. If um, kung may potential dyan... I mean, it, it builds more uh, a better case for this type of fuel. Oh, that can be, uh, uh, of course, if, 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 you if you talk about security, you're going to be cost, uh, spending a lot more money to ensure that you have that supply. Mm. I'm sure that you could get some of the fuel, if you need be, from, uh, from like Cam Norte, but in terms of cost, it will be much, much cheaper to buy it from Australia or from Canada or Kazakhstan or Russia. Ano po, eh, but in terms of, uh, in terms, uh, in, in terms of uh, volatility, uh, there's much, much lesser on uh, uh, for uranium fuel. Price volatility. Price and, as and availability. Okay, so y y the price volatility, I have seen the price yes. of uranium, no, but it's... No, it's, it's there's no comparison. Mas stable siya. Much, much, much more stable. Sige po. Thank you, po. Thank you, thank Jonathan. you, Doc. Uh, Director Lavides, any we'll make the rounds now. Good, good morning. Uh, with respect to the Department of Transportation, Mr. Chairman, we are in support also of the uh, of the enhancement of our energy fuel uh, s uh, safe security and efficiency, and we are pursuing uh, some projects relative to the imp improving road transportation through modernization and reforms. This particularly is the public utility uh, modernization program, which is a large-scale informative initiative for a restructured and environmentally sustainable transport sector. Modern PUVs entail higher fuel economy and operational savings brought about by the system reform. Increase the vehicle occupancy as well as the in fuel efficiency, fuel expense of the uh, department with respect to the energy consumption, uh, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, on the Thank you, thank you. Uh, DOS, any comments? Po? Actually, it has yeah. something to do with our balance of payments, no? um, because we import. Gusto niyo ba mag-import tayo ng marami? Sir, I think my role here is to... What is your role? ...all of the
somehow uh, change the landscape of the incentives as what have been mentioned by our colleagues from the industry. But the, but the, but the Department of Finance is uh, of the objective or of the opinion that it doesn't want any more uh, the grant of piecemeal incentives and it would like to place all incentives in just one law and the, and the Department of uh, Trade and Industry or the Bureau of uh, Investment to, to pick the winners based on performance and the Department of Finance is supporting the lowering of corporate income tax and other uh, incentive men menu under the, <laughs> the, under the uh, train to bill. It is now in the Senate and I understand that PD87 is being, is proposed to be repealed by the Department of Finance. The RE law is also in the list of being uh, repealed, but I understand that the House has delisted it from their version. So the game now is with the Senate. We have submitted, of course, our position. Uh, Director, aside from that, Balance of payment. Stabilize our balance of payment. And point. Um, looking at the what we import right now. Uh, what is the position of DOF you know, uh, regarding uh, importation of energy uh, supply? Uh, kung kayo po yung tamang no, I, ano, I, 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 I think I the balance of payment uh, is within the top of the Banco Central. Of the, uh, the as, well, uh, as regards, as we have defined security, it would include both importation and local production. So I think I am not in a position to give a my view on or the deal of view as regards on whether we import more or we import less. It's yes, not on the other side. If we import less or we don't import, what uh, how does it affect our fiscal position? If that is the other we, side. If we import more, then that would be. Uh, both uh, excises and but from the B Bureau of Cost Customs. You're in a position to answer if we, uh, based on the importations of our primary sources uh, for energy, how does it affect our fiscal position and how does it affect you know, the uh, currency exchange rate? If, uh, especially looking at the last one year, no, kasi very volatile to. Um, for example lang, I'll give you a very concrete example. If we did not import coal, no, therefore our balance of payments will be lesser, no, kasi negative tayo ngayon eh. And then it will now have an effect on our currency. No, How does it affect our fiscal position? No? From my overall point of view but I, I just want to understand that dynamic no because energy is definitely a, a big part of our importation eh. uh, I don't have the data now uh, but I, I, we, I do not have the data so we uh, will submit to okay. you. but you your concern on the incentives uh -huh. yes sir uh -oh. Oh, yes. Uh -oh. I'm Elaine Gonzalez from the PEMS of Market.
particularly in the power sector. We have this offer price cap at 32,000 pesos per megawatt hour, and we have a uh, secondary price cap where prices are pegged at 6,245 megawatt uh, per uh, uh, 6,245. Aside from that, we have the uh, only about eighty percent. Comment, lang po, Mr. Chair. Uh, we certainly. with respect to the need for certainty in policy, uh, especially in the energy development, and also in the stability story framework. Because the independent market operator of the we are mandated transparent and competition in the market. And uh, Part of that is also to redu reduce the barriers of entry into the WESM and also the ARCOA, as we are also the uh, central registration body of the uh, contestable market. Now, <coughs> as part of that, um, Mr. Chair, we are constantly looking at innovating and uh, the also the overall policy uh, directions of the, uh, especially of the Department of Energy. And we, ha uh, we believe there are smart grid and other policies that um, are being developed now by the department. Now, um, how is this related to the energy security? Uh, one figure that we saw earlier, Mr. Chair, is that 33% of the primary, primary energy source is uh, fuel oil. Now, uh, we do believe that the Department of Energy also has this policy on electric vehicle. So what we are seeing now is that the trend is to uh, go electric. And uh, of course, with, uh, if you, that means having batteries and these batteries need to be charged. And um, so that can contribute directly to the reduction of uh, importation of uh, fuel oil. But the other hand, or the other aspect on that is that we need uh, power supply, meaning generators. So this can be uh, through re renewable energy or through the sustenance of the and everything. So um, what I, Mr. Chair, is um, in terms of the market, we are constantly looking at things to uh, uh, investments into our particularly electricity supply. Trump's contribution to energy security is to improve the availability and reliability of our remaining power assets mainly the Agus Pulangi plants in Mindanao, which are uh, renewable uh, sources of energy in the, in the grid. Um, the Pisambor's direction is to pursue the rehabilitation of these plants, and preparations are already ongoing uh, for the conduct of the feasibility study to determine the extent of the rehabilitation and the cost of the, of the works. So this is also done in coordination with NPC which is currently the operator and uh, O&M operator of the plants. So in the next few years, uh, that will be the priority, uh, which is to implement the rehab to be able to extend the life of the plants, improve the reliability, and restore the original capacity not to decrease the, the capacities of the plants. So that's the priority. Um, I have a few more questions to DOE, no? um, Yusek Marcos. Um, meron ba tayong uh, simulation 
um, I think all of us, no, as a general knowledge, pag volatile ang presyo ng langis, may epekto yan sa kuryente natin at sa gasolina natin dito. No? That's a general understanding of uh, volatility. Do we have a simulation? If we achieve a certain amount of energy security or the lack of it, ano ang effect niya sa prices ng gasolina and electricity? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, we don't have the data right now, but in one of uh, the meetings that I, I had with Senior Undersecretary Ms. Posadas, there were simulations made not only with respect to oil, but also with coal. So, can you uh, share with us, ano yung, uh, w without the numbers, no? kung hindi nyo matandaan dahil but what is the general trend? So, pag tumaas ang presyo ng crudo, tumataas din. Uh, tumataas uh, ang presyo. Yeah, but I don't think it's really that significant. But there is an uh, effect. There is. Uh, there is it, pag tumaas ang presyo ng crudo, tataas ang presyo ng gasolina at kuryente dito sa atin. Apo. That's a general effect. Apo. And uh, if we import less, will it have positive or negative effect to our electricity prices and refined fuels? Importation and refined fuels. Uh, well, uh, if we we import less, we're making uh, this efficiency higher, and uh, we are making security more a uh, better. So that's the direction. Ano ng effect niya dun sa uh, presyo ng kuryente at gasolina? Is it going to uh, is it going to lower it down or push it up? If we import less, kasi po, in as a general, ano, a general uh, concept. Mr. Chair, hindi lang kasi factor yung kuryente, ay yung gasolina. Eh. The simulations that were made were a combination of and, uh, and gasoline. Uh, the, uh, the overall impact on the cost of uh, power. So, uh, on the ramifications, whether it's coal alone or, uh, or oil, I, I don't see the exact I haven't uh, seen the exact uh, detail yet. The, my point of the matter there is uh, another uh, outcome of achieving energy security is price stability. No? Um, of yes, course, yes, that's yes. a good feature of RE because wala silang variable cost uh, or at least minimal in variable cost. So by importing less, in theory, we are also... Um, lessening price volatility for our consumers no? because you're indigenous ang gamit mo dito eh. No? So it, doesn't it doesn't follow Mr. Chair because if what you import is cheaper then it's more But that's why I, I, I want uh, we'll, we'll general concepts eh, and general concepts and general understanding but simulation kasi kung sinasabi niyo walang positive effects then Uh, sa presyo mismo, sir, ng 60% po yung CIF. So, that that moves talk about the pure gas, uh, pure uh, petroleum product use. But, sa generation mix, it's only around 4% of our total. So, medyo ma maliit siya sa generation. But co it goes the same with coal. No? Kasi coal is 70% uh, imported. Eh. And coal has been also going up in the last one year. Wala lang of pressure, but it breached $100 per uh, metric ton already. No. So, so, so what you're saying is that kung direkta, uh, because of the 50 to 60% yung CIF, uh, that really moves a lot dun sa direct use ng petroleum product. But if you use it to some other, uh, uh, if you use it as a fuel to some other product like uh, uh, electricity, which has only around 4% share in the generation mix, medyo maliit po yung 4%. What I want to uh, achieve uh, with the assistance of DOE is that um, ano ba yung direct and benefit to our consumers? So, um, 
energy security to many of our constituents, abstract yan eh. So value of benefit uh, on uh, energy security. No? We will submit, Mr. Uh, Chair. And then another thing, best uh, practices. No? I also saw in literature that Japan and Korea don't produce a single oil. No? They don't even produce a single coal. They import everything. No? And Japan's economy is you know, probably 20, 30 times bigger than ours. Um, but they achieve energy security. No? At least they claim to achieve uh, energy security. So, ano ba yung mga best practices na nakikita niyo? Japan has a very diversified mix of energy and a very, very diversified source of supply. No, they don't buy from a single source as opposed to, in our case, uh, nakita ko dito, yung Middle East source of crude oil natin, 87% comes from the Middle East. No? So, um, we all know that uh, if something uh, happens in the Middle East, then we're affected here because 87% of our crude comes from them. So, in terms of best practices, ano ba yung mga nakikita yung best practices that we can uh, study and uh, emulate uh, in the future? Mr. Uh, Chair, in, in one of the uh, forums that I attended, I, uh, yung long-term contracting, uh, Japan can afford it, so they get lower cost. Plus yung uh, reserve po nila, petroleum reserve nila is about 180 days compared to us na, na uh, 30 days lang. So mas mahaba po yung yung uh, Kung magkaroon man ng uh, paggalaw sa global market, meron pa silang naka-reserve ng six, uh, six months to act on that. Plus, uh, yung pong uh, healthy energy mix nila, diversified sila talaga as you've mentioned earlier. So, uh, and considering po na more than times 10 yung GDP per capita nila, so talaga pong mas, mas kimahal sila ng konti, mas hindi yung nararamdaman compared to, to us. May I also request from the UE to uh, help us with some case studies and best practices. Admittedly, parang we're uh, quite, uh, our knowledge with energy security is quite uh, elementary. You know, and uh, I think we can move forward by looking at other best practices. I'm, I've been looking over the weekend, tinitignan ko yung sa EU, sa UK, sa Japan, Korea. And uh, I, I have some concepts, but I would leave it to the department dahil kayong experts to enlighten us as to what type of model that we can uh, emulate or at least uh, meron tayong uh, pwedeng i-pattern. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, as mentioned by uh, Director Auxilia, tama-tama po yung Korea at saka yung Japan has a big portion of uh, nuclear correct, correct. Uh, in their energy mix. So, nag-contribute din po yun sa kanilang uh, uh, energy stability and uh, security. Correct. So, we'll come up with a report po, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. A any last words, po, sir? Do you have uh, last words? Any before we uh, suspend? Uh, on uh, power generation supply sufficiency and security, under PIRA, I understand there is a problem here. The re the exactly the reason why we do not have enough power generation capacity compared to demand. Uh, there was a bad example in the past. Uh, the government-owned National Power Corporation uh, was supplying electricity to Miralco under long-term supply contract. Now, when the power plant, it terminate, Miralco terminated, pre-terminated this is supply contract with the Napocor. Napokor sued uh, Miralco, but it just paid damages, reduced damages. So no power plant, no power plant investors will invest, will put up new power plants unless it has assured 
market. Now, this is the problem. And uh, we study this and we have some recommendation to address this. This is in the compilation that I gave you. I suggest that the technical working group of the Senate Committee on Energy look into this. If they have uh, some questions, we will be willing to meet with them. If they will appreciate our recommendation, then uh, the private sector can be con consulted. The, the group of Mr. Ocampo can be consulted. This is a major problem that uh, should be looked into. Thank you, sir. And uh, um, as a final word, I uh, flashed again the DOE uh, energy sector strategic directions. And part of it, no, number one is ensure energy security. No? And uh, uh, yung iba po, yung number two to number eight, you can find that in the PEP. No? Uh, others are more detailed than the others, but the, the number one is that that's the missing chapter. No? And uh, I would like to encourage and um, uh, request from the DOE that in the succeeding update of the PEP, which is the 2018 to 2024, may sama na natin yan. Um, I think we have to be true to our you know, disclosure that uh, energy security is indeed a primordial uh, concern of our country, no? especially na, na sa number one nga ho siya. Eh, no? So um, I really um, inc uh, no, to, uh, strongly encourage uh, the UE to put that uh, in the uh, PEP. And the PEP really is our guiding Bible. Eh, no? And uh, I've been reading the PEP ever since uh, I was assigned to this committee. And um, maganda, maganda ho yung mga details, no? but I think uh, we have to um, really embed uh, what is good to our consumers, no? which is giving them, assuring them energy security, the best supply, and of course the best service. No? So um, with that, any, any final comments po before we terminate? Uh, Asek? Thank you, sir. I would just like, uh, just like the observations of Mr. Texan, Mr. Ocampo, regarding uh, the framework uh, on our in energy sector. Uh, the problems that we're facing right now uh, were problems that we faced uh, many, many years back. As you remember, there was an oil embargo in 1973, and there was this oil reduction uh, production in 1979, and our power then was dependent on oil. At that time, uh, the framework that we're using right now on energy security, uh, especially on uh, exploration or uh, production of indigenous sources of uh, energy, uh, we had the PD-87 pass, then the PD-910 and PD-912 for coal, and that we're using right now. At that time, at that time, we had a framework where the oil industry was uh, highly regulated by the government. Then we had a power industry at that time. The Napoco was strengthened by the government through a presidential decree. It was a monopoly, and it was the government that wa was running the government sector. Again, the framework changed. In both instances, in oil and in power, uh, these were controlled by the government, and so we went. In 1998, we had the oil deregulation, and in 2001, with the IPIRA. Uh, primarily, we moved uh, from being regula highly strongly regulated by the government now to competition. But still, these uh, problems are happening before us. Still, we talk about exploration. Still, we go back to PD-87. Then still, we go back to PD-910 and 912. I think uh, the DOE can only move so much as far as what the legal framework is. And so I, perhaps we could also review uh, the legal framework. Because when it was state regulated and was deregulated, we're still facing the same problems. And probably how we would make a balance on these things. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We also in this hearing, we uh, saw some threats to achieving energy security. I mentioned kanina ni Ed from the oil industry and also Jay made in, uh, mentioned earlier that the incentives, no, which uh, will hopefully propel more uh, investments in RE and also in oil and gas, 
uh, is uh, a necessity you know, to um, achieve um, energy security. That's why we also invited the UF to share their thoughts. But uh, those are the things that we will, we will be here in the Senate. We will be very um, cautious and um, uh, definitely will we'll put a lot of weight in terms of evaluating the uh, proposed removal of those incentives. Uh, my view here is um, we have to achieve a level of energy security at one point. No, hindi naman natin sinasabi next year or 10 years from now, but it has to be embedded in that PEP. It has to be embedded in our strategic uh, program. And kung may mga threats na lumalabas along the way, then uh, we will help you correct it. No? And we will help um, remove those threats as much as possible. And as much, and also the proposed legislation, will we're here to work with you because I think our goal is common in terms of uh, achieving what's best for the Filipino people. That's great. Uh, with that, um, just as a reminder, sa PNOCEC, yung service contract and timetable, sa Meralco, um, the effects on electricity price increase uh, because of the pass on. And the DOF, yung um, uh, effects to uh, our fiscal position um, due to importation. Um, with that, uh, again, thank you very much for your time and participation. Um, uh, hopefully, we've learned a lot from this uh, exercise. Thank you. Thank you very much for meeting suspended.